can only get us chatting in Skype, right? Uh, on the show notes. Yeah, so chat has to be on Google. Fuck. It's cleaner because of Twitch. It messes if you type if you type on Skype. It messes up the positioning of things. It's it's weird. It's some bad juju. Oh, we got a drinker. I was yeah. I was go get your booze. I was gonna do some booze, but I need I need a juice. I'm I'm yeah, exhausted. Yeah, the first week on all games. I don't know if we should really freaking like hammer it down or anything. <laughs> oh, this is just one beer. I I can not drink it. Don't worry. I can keep it on the side. No, you know, they're, they're not. We have an alcoholic now for a guest host. I'm not. An and alcoholic. I just. I'm, I'm, I'm not an alcoholic. Man, Matt, you're just. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. <laughs> you need to back up. But back the the thing is, is right you're now. getting so defensive. And, I'm and not getting really, defensive. That's, you're, that's you're the problem. Ass, you guys are turning out that. You guys got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that old commercial from the, like, the 80s where it's like, where'd you learn that from? I learned it from like, by watching you. Or something like that. Oh, really. Yeah, little kid uh, got all, so all sassy. Is on this show? No, he might join us for the next show. Uh, okay. One of our upcoming shows. Good, I'll never Yogi be on the show. Yogi has a tendency of... of a What's that? that are really, I thought we were going to have six people today. What did you say, Matt? I'm just kidding. I love Fred. Don't worry. I'm just <laughs> I, went, I went to Atlanta with that dude. I, I know. I room with that dude. I know. I heard you guys got a big bed to share together. And so anyway, let me just do the little special spiel for people tuning in. What? I got the pregame going. I got the pregame going. I got to tell the date and all that stuff. So it's you April 10th. share the bed together? It's the 7th 14. Saved money. And it was a lot of love. It's a big bed. And the balls did not touch. <laughs> the balls did not touch. So it wasn't gay. Who said that? Who said balls didn't touch? <laughs> Alright, so that's it. I got to You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the balls oh. did touch. Wow. Alright, Obi, we gotta let me know when we start the official stream because we're still pre-gaming because the moment we start, I'm gonna start the stopwatch. We gotta stay under two hours right. because today, it. don't start it yet, don't start it yet. Alright, today is April 10th, 2014, episode 17th. Let's move to Canada for Hearthstone. That's right. And we got Matt Bradford with us. Now, he's got limited time, so we gotta have to go cut to the feature discussion as soon as possible. Matt, jump ahead. We got two feature discussions. Choose the one you wanna discuss before you leave. Good. And then we'll okay. tr try to squeeze another one. That's your, your, that's your homework, and then you can just type right. about it on a Google thing. I have a feeling I know which one you're gonna prefer to talk about. One's more of a rant. Where, do, where okay? Where do I find my two choices? I'm now this starting. is for when I have to leave. I'm gonna let you know, right? Yogi, well, we want you to be part of off the first oh, whatever. You. Okay. You know the first five minutes of it. So I've already started. So whenever you guys are ready. Okay. Go you already go. you already started. He's gonna give me more editing work to do. All right, so count us, count us in, Ob. Like count us in with vocally, and then tell us to stop talking, so when the music's playing, and then. But uh, yeah, my, it's it's the two. This is feature. Two of them. Actually, one is a quickie, but it could be made into a feature. It's more of a rant than anything else. Cool beans. So this isn't a video podcast then, right now, or is it? Yeah, it Are is. Doing the thing on Twitch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the What's the link to Twitch again? Twitch.tv forward slash Obi1x2. Obi1x2. Obi1. That's Obi1. Obi1. What's that? Obi1. X2. 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 Drop an X2. Alright, so Matt could only stay with us to like 12, 12, 15. Alright. Okay. That's good. That's a long time. That's an hour and a bit. Yeah, that's why I want to make sure you join us for at least one feature, one discussion. Okay, I think you started the music. Okay, music. I just want to make sure all the dates are right, right? Wait, I thought you said we started. <laughs> and welcome back. This is horseplay. I didn't count down either. Yeah, you're terrible. Let's start over. It's a shit show. <laughs> and welcome back. This is horseplay. Welcome back, guys, ladies and gentlemen. This is horseplay, episode seventeenth, April tenth, two thousand and fourteen. We'll get right into that. As you guys see right here, we have. 
Mr. McFly right beside me. And beside hey. him, my co-host, cohort, and the man that always gets me in trouble, Yogi Zilla. I was going to call him Yogi One again. I don't know why, but I just did. Hey, guys, what's going on? The title of today's show is Let's Move to Canada. Good for time. For Hearthstone. Yeah, maybe just for say. Hearthstone. Just for Hearthstone. Anything else is okay. What's, what's the context behind that? You can't get Hearthstone in your ghettoville? No, we country? have Hearthstone, but we want Hearthstone on these things. Oh, so the portable version <laughs> rolled out and in Canada. Yeah. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, that's spoiler. Spoiler for our own show. We're going to get into that in the news. I'm sorry. Good Lord. Rigid. Well, okay, hey. first. <laughs> I'm not going to derail. I'm not derailing, but I'm asking the Twitch, the Twitch address for your listeners because I can't seem to get onto it. So if I'm a listener, how do I watch this on Twitch TV right now? Twitch.tv yeah. forward slash OB1. O-B-I. The one, the, 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 the word one. Oh, X, word one. Yes, X2. Okay, okay. O-B-I-O-N-E-X2. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Horseplay Live, which today is... The derailment is spe- uh, spectacular. Because every time we got Matt, he's like, yeah, let's find a way to get it off the rails. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that, this is that's someone's his goal every time. League of Legends. It says, <laughs> playing some league, I have no idea what I'm doing. Then you <laughs> don't. I know. It's okay. Wait. I don't know that. that oh, there we are. Oh, oh, no, there's Do- Zoe Deschanel. Is that Zoe Deschanel? You have. Oh, no, Obi no. has Oi- Zoe. Obi has Zoe as as a stand-in. That's that's very effective. You, your Twitch followership will go up very fast that way. <laughs> that's all you gotta do to really be popular on Twitch is just show some cleavage. I guess Ma- just female, okay. female cleavage. Sorry. Uh, hey, Man boobs do not count. I saw a nip. Oh, okay, there we go. I get, I'm gonna shut up now. All right, do your thing. Okay. Drink off camera. All right, so you, you can drink on camera. This is not, this is rated explicit. We're, we we're not pulling any punches. We're rated R, baby. <laughs> Just think about it as VGO without the interruption of the guitar. Oh, that's nice. Uh, John hasn't done that in a while, so. Yeah, he has, he has, he has been good about that, actually, yeah. I actually <laughs> yeah, kind of miss it now. You were saying, Yogi, about uh, something. So, yeah, uh, today's a special show because we're officially, officially on all games. Uh, as, as long as uh, everybody shows support. So, I might as well just put that out, you know, the cat's out of the bag. We're on allgames.com, so we're part of your family over there with zombie cast and video game outsides and all that. And I think we were supposed to be on the 5 p.m. slot, but apparently we got voted up. We got put it to prime time, 7 p.m., right before B Team. Hey, hey, so, hey. so, how is that possible? Wait, we're okay, I'm, I'm dumb, first of all. But we're recording <laughs> at 11 o'clock right now. Is it next show at 7 o'clock, or is it just not a live show? At it's going to be archives, because there's no way. Well, actually, we can, we might be able to swing 7 p.m. Originally, it was supposed to be 5 p.m. And by the way, I just want to give a quick apologies to the uh, All Games Network community. Uh, well, uh, more of a disclaimer. I had nothing to do with the running into and running over on our show and taking time out of the PAX East coverage. We had nothing to do with that. Everybody's playing. Yogi, Yogi, Yogi's behind it. I see him in the chat. Like I, I'm getting nasty grams from Chip Sella. Like on, the face, on Facebook, he's like, "Dude, cut off the stream now!" And I'm like, "I'm not doing anything." <laughs> we're not even were live. They getting, were they really getting that worked up about it? Really? No, but he did write the word "now" in all caps. So I was like, "Whoa!" Well, what what did they have to cut in with? Like what nachos we- they ate at the uh, Pax uh, <laughs> convenience store? Actually, I'm jealous. There's a lot of people at PAX. There's uh, Chris Gannon from uh, Gamer Death Podcast. No, Gamer Life, Gamer Death. There's a lot of uh, all games people at uh, PAX right now. Yes, yes. Let's uh... celebrate that. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you guys to keep going. We're just gonna slowly start the show today. No, we're good. We're good. So are, Mike? okay. No, well, yeah. No, not you. Um, can you hear me all right? By the way, I can hear you great. You sound okay. sexy. Am I- well, so do you, buddy. I don't- Maybe we can share a room together. My game is not up. I'm just naturally loud, hey, louder than people hey, in the room. I mean, Matt, whatever you want to do, bud. I, mean, I grew a ginger beard for you. Did you know that? I know you did. I saw that. Yeah. I'm very impressed I, by I grew, it. I grew a man's beard for you. <laughs> I can't help it comes in red. That's my curse. That's what I'm born with. 
I'm trying my best here. <laughs> well, quick fun fact. Remember we did a little thing, fun facts, where we all shared things about each other. One thing that's weird about me is whenever I just, you know, get lazy and don't feel like shaving, I get random, like, patches of red hair and blonde hair. It's like, what the hell? Of course, I have a lot more gray hair than anything else. That's, I guess it's old age. My hair doesn't know what it wants and what to do now. Part of your face is soulless, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. Pretty much. But anyway, let's get keep going with this, guys. We are on all games. You guys did hear that. We are very, very thankful for that because uh, they're giving us a shot, and we're going to give it to them. We're going to give it to them right. We're going to give it to them right now. You guys can tweet us throughout the show right here, Obi-Wan X2, at Matto McFly. I, do, I will say motto because I'll say it later. But And at YogiZilla uh, on Twitter. You guys can hit us up. We will answer. And, of course, up there at top, right above Yogi's and Matt's head, you guys see a voicemail, 206-415-4987. You guys want to call in, give us a voicemail. We'll play that live right here tonight. So, like I said, the title is um, Let's Move to Canada. For Hearthstone. Great title. For Hearthstone. No, not so good. Not so good. I like the dramatic pause. It's good. Now, you guys are, I you guys are gonna, technically I, savvy. Right. <laughs> but could you could you not make it so that your phone thinks it's in Canada? Is there not? A oh, see, he's giving the spoilers. He's the, oh, we're about to get into that. See, I'm ah. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. Okay. Hey, Matt. I think. I'm That's a very good point. That's a very good point, though. Matt, <laughs> he's drinking up. Matt, I'm, I, I'll get in trouble too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let Yogi open the show because we're spoiling everything in the first five minutes yeah i am sorry i'm gonna see i put together all these show notes so we're structured and all our guests and hosts <laughs> first mistake putting together show notes <laughs> you know they can know having a, fe a feel and matt's no not new to this he knows our format we start off with introductions and just casual chat how you doing what you would what you've been doing you your hair looks great i love your cardigan you know whatever you look like Mr. Rogers, that, that kind of stuff. And then we go into the obligatory news. But anyway, so yes, uh, don't forget, uh, besides uh, Twitter, which you can reach us at Obi1X2, YogiZilla, Geeky Antics, and Matt McFly. That's from Matt Bradford over there. The man the man himself. We love him. He's a pain in our ass, but we love having him here. <laughs> I can't, I, I, I'm pointing according to Skype. I'm not looking at the Twitch because too much going on. My brain goes, Poor. and also uh, the voicemail, yeah. 206-415-4987. Probably won't have much time to play the voicemails today, but when we have uh, a quiet time and we don't have a guest, we'll likely play a lot of the voicemails. So we'll see if we get to them today, but we will play, play them and then uh, <laughs> respond to them during the show. Again, 206-415-4987. We're part of the All Games uh, family. It is a test run, so support us. Go over to allgames.com and go hang out in the chat. I recommend don't use the, the web app. Actually, use an IRC client and, and just hang out in the chat. Don't just pop in and just hang out there. And they'll be like, who are you? I'm a horseplay fan. You got to keep the show on. Keep the dream alive. Just saying. And okay. And if you're not into voicemail, you don't want us to hear your voice or whatever, you can email us too. That, that's the thing too. So uh, that's geekyantics at gmail.com. And our website is now simply just geekyantics.net. Super easy. <laughs> so yes. Um, I agree. To 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 elaborate, right now, due to the logistics, we will not be live on all games. You'll be listening to previous episodes. So tonight, I believe they played episodes 16 at 7 o'clock. A little after 7, they were running a little late. And next week, they'll play this episode, which you, the guys that are here on Twitch are seeing live. It's going to be a little confusing because we're going to be serving two audiences, but eventually we'll do it so that we'll be actually live on all games. But again, it is a t test run to see if there's a demand there. And a little anecdote. <laughs> Derek was giving us a hard time. He said, you know, every every podcast out there about gaming is uh, just a bunch of guys in a room talking about whatever. I'm like, is that a bad thing? That's kind of the idea. We're Friends in three rooms, A. Ah. And we're men, we're not guys, mm. and we're interesting, and we all have beards, one of them's ginger, <laughs> uh, Obi's got a cool hat, and we got videos, so it's not just your regular video show, you guys are going to rock it on all games, I think, you guys are, you guys are going to be right at home. That's it, we got the official, we're going to make that into a, we got to make it into a bumper. <laughs> I'm so happy. 
I know. I, I get. Oh, so, if I could hug you guys right now, I would. Probably not. Dude, Walker Stalker Con, we definitely gotta make arrangements to get together. That'd be awesome. I know, I know you, you may not be able to make it either, but I almost have no excuse because I'm in Georgia. I no, I'm um, right now. I'm pretty much on board for Walker Stalker Con, and uh, not to sound too pluggy, but yeah, that's the thing that Zcast is gonna go to. Oh yeah, and we got a lot of we got a lot of cool people coming down. We got yourself, I think. We got uh, Tim uh, Tim Curtis, maybe Obi. Get on over there. No. Oh, be yeah. the shifty yes. eyes, shifty eyes, McGee over there. No, no it'll I'm, be a fun I'm, time. So. I'm trying to fix technical issues because people are saying they can't hear certain people. I'm trying to uh, fix no it. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. Yes, I will definitely try to get into. What are we talking about again? <laughs> Walker Stalker Con, you know the zombie fest, a lot of wa the Walking Dead, but not just the Walking Dead. This, that's that's the, like the nucleus, but it's just anything zombie and even horror. Just people get together yeah, in this actually, convention. You know what? I'm more excited for just the seeing the Zcast crew and uh, any of the listeners. I think it's gonna be a fun time. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I'm excited about. <laughs> I'm excited it? for my. It's in Atlanta, just at, right downtown Atlanta, in the Westin Hotel. Yeah, I wish I could, man. You're but banned for yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. The tr the, the truth is that he's gonna be playing golf. golf. See, that was originally gonna be. That was, a, <laughs> that was originally our, our that was a, our original original show yeah. title. That golf's not a real sport. <laughs> but then Obi got upset. Said, "All right, I respect your beliefs." Oh, but, dude. I don't think we're even going to talk about that. But I'm, I am going to say I am annoyed by the traffic that's caused by Masters Week because I'm in Augusta, Georgia, the the home of golf essentially, and. Mm -hmm. And there's just a bunch of snooty people with nothing better to do than watch people hitting balls with a stick, you know, and then just taking everybody's parking spots and not knowing how to drive and causing all kinds of jams and it upsets me. Yeah. But it's a good, it's a good, it's a good business opportunity because if you have like a nice house and you go out of town, people rent out their houses for like 10k a week, 15k a week, 20k a week. I mean, it's crazy. Do it up. Why didn't you do that? Wow, I'm not I'm not quite in that position yet. <laughs> I never tell you I'm weird about that. I would like to have another house that I don't live in that I could rent out and then kick people out of it for that Masters Week. I don't want people touching my stuff. Like Just people, golf fans, what are they gonna do? Go to bed at seven o'clock and maybe like drink your milk. Yeah, yeah, like but see, I, I I'm a, I'm anal. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna have to like take. It. I'll take a black light and start waving it over everything. I'm like, what's going on here? Okay. <laughs> Did yeah, they do stuff? If you didn't do that now, it wouldn't be a bad situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I do have plans to do that, and, and so, probably next time. I'm not, not, definitely not this time. It's a little late. You got to plan ahead for that stuff. I mean, they start hiring for the event back in like uh, October, and it's a and it starts in April. You know, mm -hmm. so everybody's making the ranges well before that. To, you know, do all that stuff. People have shuttle buses. If they have if they have a van, they do shuttles. You know. It's crazy. It's a lot, a lot of money to be made. Waitresses. Madhouse. It, it's nuts. There's a thing. Madhouse. I avoid se certain streets during this time because it's if you want to get somewhere, and it usually takes uh, ten minutes. It's gonna take about forty-five minutes or an hour. You know, it's like dr being back in New York City. No, thank you. It's a nightmare, man. I don't know how you're doing it. <laughs> Dude. Oh. Taking one step at a time. I know. Good for you, buddy. If you guys ever, if you guys ever driven through Washington D.C., you know what I'm talking about. Gridlock traffic in Washington D.C. is insane. It's... Oh, speaking of one step at a time. <laughs> I uh, no no. I am going to be climbing the CN Tower in uh, the first weekend of May for the WWF Foundation fundraiser. So uh, if you want to donate money to my cause, go to wwfsomethingorother.com and look for Matt Bradford. I can Neat. get the real link, but I don't know. Yeah. WWF or WWE? Uh, it's not a wrestling foundation. It's the World Oh, World okay. World I was World like, World. I, I, <laughs> you said that. No. Sorry. See, that's the thing. I'm going to say that at I first, uh, I, I got very pissed off about how the, the WWE was forced to change a name because the WWF had that name first. But no one called the you know World Wildlife Foundation the WWF. No one called it that. That was WWF was always wrestling. You know, yeah, that was so 
And then WWE, I think that's part of the reason I kind of fell out of grace with wrestling. It just it never really clicked with me. WWE it doesn't sound as good. WWF is like, yeah, it's like almost like WTF, you know. So anyway, uh, Matt, since you're not gonna be here for the whole show, just, you know, you already gave a plug. Give us a. Uh, you have any other plugs, real quick, where where, where we can find you? No, I just I, you know that's that's a good cause, and uh, so I just wanted to put it out there. No, no, no. I wasn't saying that. Uh, I wasn't trying to be uh, facetious or anything. You have anything else to plug? I'm trying to do something good in this world and just shoot me down like that. No, I think that's great. It's awesome. When the guys at uh, 42 Level 1 were doing, uh, what was it called? Extra Life or something like that? That, that, that one. Oh, that's right, yeah. I, I supported it. Oh, by, by the way, yeah, Ali actually already uh, donated a little bit of money. That guy's a cool cat. Ali and uh, the team at Level 40. I'm going to plug them because they're cool cats. Like you guys. You guys are also cool. A lot of cool cats on the Old Games Network. Hell yeah. Cool Hopefully we stay as part of family. I'm just saying. I don't. I think you have to screw up. Pretty. Guys, you've heard VGO. You, you've heard the things John sings. It takes a lot to get kicked off in all games. <laughs> yeah, especially with with Negro Lover. Holy Hannah! I don't want to get into that. <laughs> For yeah. several weeks, that was like the theme song. Like, okay, well. By the way, moving on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> moving on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to speed things up. We're gonna have, um. Okay, what's going on? Obi's having some technical issues over there. I I don't know if the audio is... Uh, the audio sounds perfect to me. What I could do... See, I hear Matt just fine. I think... Uh, so I'm going I'm to I'm have to do a lot of editing. I have a feeling this is going to be an episode. Cause I think on your side, Obi, the audio is messed up. So what I usually do, I take the audio tracks from my recording, and then I just super impose them and start comp compressing them and all this crazy stuff. Podcast behind the scenes. We just broke the fourth wall. That's a, that's a bad... That's bad. You can't do that. So, so we're gonna try to speed it through. Uh, we're already like twenty minutes in, and we're gonna try to speed it through the news. We're gonna have a little news abrevious, and uh, while Obi goes in mad scientist lab, you can drink on the camera, man. Does it matter? I was about to drink tonight. I actually didn't. <laughs> I'm having one beer. Yeah, it's eleven o'clock. This is usually a time where I'm getting ready to watch some Jimmy Fallon, maybe playing some video games. This is my like my brain shutting down type of night. Well, this is a perfect show to be on then. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's why you guys get derailing, man. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, this is our news of brief. We'll try to speed through it real quick. And then we got a quick discussion coming up about... Just kind of talking a little bit about The Walking Dead and some other shows and whatnot. And then uh, we'll have two feature discussions. But Matt's going to choose the one that we're going to focus on first before he has to bail on us. That's how we're going to do it this time. Switching things up a little bit. Alright, so let's go to the news... You want to do the news, Obi, or, or shall I? No, go ahead, man. I'm still trying to figure out ways to turn you down and not Matt because I, yeah, anyway. To turn me down. I mean, the only thing I, I get. Yeah. Wait, uh, watch. I can do loon call. Just hold up. Hold up. Okay, what's up? One sec. <laughs> God damn, wake up. Okay, one sec. <laughs> I'm gonna practice this. Just do your news. <laughs> this is good. This is good video, guys. I can't do my new. Yeah, this is a good video. Yeah, we're we're listening. Huh? The harmonic, a uh, hand harmonica. What is it exposely? No, exposely. Zoom call. Oh, obligatory yeah. news. I could do this. We're gonna try a little right. to have a little news. Uh, we, I don't know what that means right there. So today, we're going to chat with Matt Moto more. Moto. Cat and Fox over at allgames.com report that Sword Art Online Season 2 goes live in July. I don't necessarily know what Sword Art Online is. <laughs> I'm probably going to get yelled at that when I... Hear about well, how we done for this week? Can, does anybody want to give me some sort of I, on what's going on here? I have uh, no idea. I'm lost. But I, 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 yeah. Yes, I'm not the only one. All right, I, first of all, I, mo <laughs> I moved the mic. I realized I'm a very loud Puerto Rican. So I moved the mic away from my mouth to offset the technical issues. Is that better? Am I more balanced with Matt? I almost straight up called you a Mexican for a second ago. Is that better? Is that better, yes, Obi? It is. That's okay. A lot better. There. 
All right, so saying everyone comes out in stereo except the one. Per- I don't care. <laughs> so sorry. Good observation, but I, I I thought it was worse. Everybody than comes out in stereo except for who? I I don't know. Mm. Oh, you know what? I'm not even in the chat with everybody. That's what that's what I forgot to do is go in the chat chat. I knew I missed stuff. Anyway, Sword Art Online oh, is wow. basically like uh, like um, you ever seen Dot Hack or uh, okay, it's an anime like like Dot Hack. Or um, if you want to take it to like an old school show, full time or full time, when a guy would go into another virtual reality and immerse himself in that world, or full time. Mm. No, I didn't remember the full time. Man, that was, mm. that was a, like a huge series of video games, wasn't it? It was like a faux MMO. It was like yeah. a single player that made you think you were in an MMO. So that's what Sword Art Online is like. That someone, uh, a guy, creates a, a MMO and people actually get transferred into it, but then suddenly people start actually dying in the in the game. But there's more to it. I don't want to say more, much more than that. But they're coming back for another season. And I don't know how they could stretch the show out. Because I thought it was kind of like a one and done kind of thing. It was a great show, though. But um, It's kind of like it's kind of like the show Guild. I love okay? the Guild. The I Guild, the yeah. Problem. They need the, more. The Guild is different, though. Because that's a hilarious show. And it's, it's a comedy, so you can do a lot of stuff. And it's more about what happens. Warcraft. Yeah, and it, well, unofficially. But it, unofficially, it's... Unofficially, yeah. But it's more about the lifestyle of people that play those kind of games, you know? And what happens behind the scenes, which is... That, that's what makes it awesome. But uh, actually, I got some related news about that coming up. But what, what's interesting about, you know... They have news about Sword Art Online coming back, you know, Season 2. But no word on Attack on Titans. And I have a, a piece coming out on Geeky Antics blog that you guys gotta check out. It's kind of like a newbie guide to anime. So, like, if you've been out of the scene for a long time and you've never got into it, I'm gonna share a few good ones that I think are must-sees and that mostly everybody will, will, will appreciate. So that's gonna be a little thing I'm gonna do. Attack on Titans is one of those. But it's another show that's been on, on hiatus. And one of the things that if you watch that show, it's like, they never answer the question, what the fuck is in the basement? It's like, okay? And they just leave you hanging. Um, so quick tech news, Twitter has announced that they're going to be changing their platform, uh, to, you know, they're kind of gearing up to, uh, attract new users, and one of the things they're going to do is get rid of hashtags, and a, a lot of the short, yeah, this is crazy, right, they, and they're going to get rid of a lot of the short codes, like DM or R, like there's certain things you could type, I, f- I forget all of them, but to make it easier to interact on Twitter, right from the command line or whatever, the virtual command line, whatever you want to call it, um, and they, w- they want to make it basically more appealing to the average user, more like Facebook. So, so it's more like a point-and-click thing. Ooh. That's, that's my impression, because I saw a new interface on that show at midnight. They were making fun of the new interface. It looks like Facebook. It's, it looks like they're going for Facebook. It's terrible. What makes Twitter great is that it attracts the people that really get social media and are at least tech-savvy enough to figure it out. And there's already enough idiots as it is. If you guys want to be scared, I'm going to give you a fun little thing to do. And you guys can call in on voicemail and, and share anything funny you find. This will be a fun thing to do. So, again, a voicemail line is 206-415-497. And let's do this. Go on a Twitter app like Uber Social or um, Twitter itself on your phone. Um, what's another good one? Hootsuite, Tweetcaster. And look up tweets nearby. Make sure your GPS is on. And look at tweets that are nearby you. It's a great way to meet people that are nearby. It's cool. That's like Tinder, right? Yeah, it pretty, exactly. But uh, without without the hookups, uh, hopefully that. I, I can I see do stalker killing mass killings coming. Yeah, that's definite stalker territory. Well, what what's I funny like about it? How to do it? <laughs> yeah, how do you do it? <laughs> what's what's great about it is when you do that. I swear, no matter where you go, you find the most ghetto things. <laughs> how do, how do you just... do that, though? Say, okay, talk me through it, Yogi. I've got my app open right now. Using an uh, official Twitter app? Uh, I have to show you offline, because I know where... It's, it's somewhere buried in here, I'm sure. But... Yeah, see, that's why I don't like... The Twitter app itself actually isn't as good as the other like, third-party apps. It's very streamlined. Yeah. But it, I know okay. it's in there. I know it's in there. But if you, I, I use Uber Social, and Uber Social is amazing. It breaks down Twitter streams into video, pictures. You can have an inner circle so you don't get all the other spam. You can just focus on a few people that you actually care about, like your friends. You can, it has full support for lists. That's my, that's my plug there. Uh, but yeah, look, do a local search. There's some stuff, funny stuff happening. Weapon? 
on, on a very serious note, getting rid of hashtags is going to disrupt a lot of things. I know a lot, like, if, if you watch shows now, there's always a hashtag at the bottom. Like, that's yep. how they measure audience now with hashtags because Nielsen ratings are unreliable because everyone's yep. downloading and streaming. Um, so getting rid of hashtags is going to take away that metrics from a lot of the, the top... Exactly. Players. And it's going to... It's going to, for people that actually learn how to use Twitter to find things, the hashtag is a great way to find relevant information, you know, rather than, it's, rather than going to someone you follow and just reading their entire stream, the hashtag always gives you something that interests you, like if you hashtag Doctor Who, hashtag Sega, whatever you want to do, hashtag WTF, you know, whatever booter, you can find something. <laughs> but on that same note, 90% of the population misuses hashtags, just, all they do is like, they just take what they're saying and hashtag every word as if somehow their conversation is going to become trending, right? Like, a lot of people don't understand hashtags. Well, see, the, the, those them. people that do hashtag uh, spam, they automatically yeah. get truncated. They, yeah. If you do too many hashtags, eventually you don't show up in results because they basically put a, a dunce hat on you and put you on timeout. You just don't know it. Take that, dunce. Twit dunce. <laughs> but dunce sitters. This is what I think about it, though. Everybody's integrating hashtags facebook is supporting them now google plus and other places you see hashtags showing up because it's an interesting way of of putting a tag or a, a keyword or a category category built into a, a message in line or a title in line right so i don't think they're going to get rid of it completely i think it's going to make it more behind the scenes and what they should do is give it make it so that everybody has the option. You could you could upgrade to this new crappy Facebook looking version or keep it the old school way. That's what it should be. Not like Facebook did with the timeline. You know, everybody got the forced uh, upgrade. Here's what's happening. The new way, and we don't know how it's doing it, the new way has been optimized to make money for Twitter. So I guarantee you uh, there's gonna be some element there where they can either collect data easier on the new way, better advertisements, something, but you're not going to have a choice, right? There's no, there's no way they're doing this just on a whim. This is like a heavily researched move on Twitter's part. And I think they're looking to make a crap ton of money out of it. Well, see, I, don't, I, I call BS on that. I don't think they're not making enough money BS right on now. You! you know why? They make tons of money just from user insights, from all the things that are trending and providing that to marketers. They have the promoter tweets that show up in your stream from people that you're not following. They have... Um, they can provide all that, all that, all those, all that data, all those data points to people that want the market research to produce new ad campaigns or whatever they're right doing. Yeah. I mean, now the new interface, though, like right to the right side of it, I think, has people you should follow. That's totally going to be sponsored. People are going to pay money to have their name show up and people you should follow. Um, so maybe they're opening up new revenue. Stream. Either way, I trust Twitter knows what it's doing. Uh, I like the Twitter I have now. The appeal to me is that it's it's quick, it's easy, it doesn't have all the trappings of all the other social media crap. Um, <laughs> and I, I I rarely tweet anyways, but I use it to get information out when I need to. Yeah. And I'm not gonna hey, I'm not gonna invest. Facebook. Welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook's on its way out. Mm. Yeah. I mean, maybe not this year or next year, but like my I go on my Facebook wall. It's my great aunt. It's my <laughs> aunt. Uh, it's my uncle, and it's like my teachers. Like rarely now am I getting news from people my age. Well, you know what, you know what it is. Um, in in uh, in the marketing world, we have a thing like this. It's loosely called the rule of six. Uh, yeah. Every every social network has li lasted around six years, give or take. Friendster, MySpace, you know, yeah. and tons of other ones you could think of. So Facebook is well past that shelf life. So it's it's gonna be downhill from here. Or uphill, they bought Oculus Rift, though, so... Yeah, let's not even get into that. Let's, get, let's finish the news. we got too many good things to talk about, but if we have enough time, we definitely can free ball and revisit some of this stuff. Yeah, I definitely want to get... To, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's uh, finish up the news. So, yeah, great news, everybody. Great news. You ready? Is that Yogi? Do you, you guys watch uh, Tabletop, the show? Mm, oh, no. with Will Wheaton? Yes! I haven't watched it, but is it good? It's awesome. I love Tabletop games, and I love Will Wheaton, and I love Felicia Day. <laughs> Will Wheaton, wait, Will Wheaton's the guy that played in that, uh, what's the Geo movie? Uh, he's Dr. been a bunch Prisoner of Prisoner or something like that. Um, he's uh, the he's the, the Scottish guy with the kilt on, uh, on, the, on the guild. He's yeah, the, yeah. the douchey guy in there. But he's on a bunch of other things. I mean, he's he was uh, Wesley Is Crusher. He's the one that plays the head lawyer in um, that show that's he, out now. Do you think he's going to Saved by the Bell guy? 
getting your guys mixed up. Yeah, you yeah. think about Mario Lopez? No, no, oh. um, Zach, like... Oh, oh, um, you know the you know you know the the head guy on. Uh, have you ever guys ever seen the show Suits? Uh, I have seen one episode. Yeah. Well, you know the the blonde the 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 actual lawyer. That's not Zach from. That is Zach. By the bell. No, it's That's not. Zach You're on crack. I am no, on crack. It's not. it's not Zach. Then you need to have your shelf life adjusted. His real name is Mark Paul Gossler, by the way. Oh, uh, he's right. It's not Zach. Thank you. Then that's not the right person. Uh, his okay. Gabriel Max. Okay, is I think Harvey or Mike. I think we're going down a dark place anyway. Because what we're we in, uh, I don't remember him being in that. He's been on Eureka and he's been a bunch of other things. He was Wesley Crusher from Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Oh. He was the little that. kid on on what Star Trek. He's, he's got, got blonde hair Star now. Kind of long, blonde. No, no. no. Be, Never mind. All right, moving on. Yep. Now you're on crack. Good, good, I am show delivery. Bro. Good try, though. Good try. <laughs> By the way, tabletop tabletop's coming back for season th- season three. It's been crowdfunded. And everybody got together, rallied to b- bring back season three. So it's a good time to catch up with it because it's in, it's going to probably start production soon. So there's two seasons to watch. It's a great show. And basically, what tabletop does, it's like celebrity bowling, but without Chris Hardwick, which is already great because he's kind of a douchebag. <laughs> Well, it's just the Chris Hardwick show whenever Chris Hardwick... Is. Yeah, he's... Everything's about him. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Hardwick. It's like, okay, less of, less of you, more about everyone else. <laughs> well, you made a great point the other day in the uh, chat there, Yogi, and it's, it's what Chris Hardwick... Chris Hardwick's a good bowler. His dad was a professional bowler. Now he passed away earlier this year. Uh, so he made a show specifically to show how good of a bowler he is. Um, Terrible! I haven't watched it. I love The Nerdist, which is the, the podcast that started it off, except yep. for the navel-gazing. Um, it's, they had a lot of good guests, but then uh, Chris Hardwick, if you're listening, I respect the work you're doing because you're doing a shit ton of work. <laughs> and, and please add me to your network because I do honestly respect. But every episode was like how... <laughs> I'm really digging a hole for myself. Every episode was like how Chris Hardwick ha- used to be fat. Uh, he doesn't drink anymore. Yeah. And uh, how difficult it is to be an actor. Like, that is every episode of The Nerdist. I, yeah, I, I can't. It, uh, it's too he's self. He's interviews, but yeah. He's great at interviews. He's definitely good at that. He's got a very great voice, very good projection, articulation, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But he's just, it's just too much about him. If you made it less about him and more about everyone else on the network, great. And that's what I like about Will Whedon and Felicia Day. And, and Will Whedon on, on, on Tabletop, he loses almost every match. <laughs> you know, it's not he's not choosing games that he's like awesome at to destroy people in. I think he's only won once in two seasons. You know, so it's a big difference. It's more about the the camaraderie and the and and the the social interaction between the guests, not about who's the best and just whipping it out on the table, you know. <laughs> so so basically you're giving the example of how geeky antics is, basically. Yeah. We're there for everybody else, right? Yo? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's basically how you're explaining it. I like to, yeah, I like to think we're more on par with Geek and, Su- Geek and Sundry. Shout outs. I've actually gotten replied replies from Will Whedon, so I feel special. <laughs> you, sh- you should listen to um, if you like that. Listen to a podcast called Nerd Poker, uh, with Brian Hussein, uh, and it's a bunch of comics, and they just they do um, Dungeons and Dragons. They do Dungeons and Dragons campaigns for like five episodes arcs. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's just comedians playing Dungeons and Dragons. That's it's hilarious. I've 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 heard it. Good stuff. There's yeah. so there's so much great content out there. It's hard to keep up. So, but definitely, uh, I'm a big fan of tabletop. It's one of the few things that I make a concerted effort to make sure I keep up with because I love it that much. And I just love playing tabletop games. I love my video games, but it's something about a tabletop game, a pen and paper game, where you're connecting with people and really getting to know each other. You know, it's something that's missing. I think sometimes. But anyway, more great news, guys. And this one is for Chip Sutter over at the B-Team Podcast. The Hearthstone iPad app, and this is why I was saying you were spoiling this earlier, has been released in Canada, Matt. And... Oh, Canada. Canada. We get mobile <laughs> versions of card games. <laughs> so Hearthstone and free healthcare. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we really do have to move to Canada, but it's also it's also out in New Zealand and Australia. I put other countries. It's, I, I, I confirm it's just three countries. Those are like the test markets. Um, so I I couldn't wait. Matt, by the way, he's enjoying his song over there. 
So Matt, I, I couldn't, I couldn't wait, and I, I forgot to tell you this, you know, earlier. <laughs> I, I decided to move to P Petersboro. Am I close to you? Yeah, you actually, Peterborough, you're actually about an hour away. That's great. We should get together for a beer, dude. Yeah. Peter. Peterborough, I, I, I lived there for about uh, 10 minutes, uh, and then I oh. moved away. Did you Sorry. hack the system, Yogi? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to ruin it, but i tell you what. If you guys want to find out how you could get an early access to Hearthstone on the iPad or iPhone, uh, there might, may or may not be information over at geekyantics.net. Just saying. Okay, I'm going to look. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. That'd be, I'm gonna, it's going to go up tomorrow, probably. I'm going to go on my Google Play right now. Don't go now. You're, you're... Oh, yeah, Matt, we totally got to play this together. You, know, you haven't played this yet? I haven't played it yet, no. Oh, he's killing me. All right, we're going to come back to no, that. See, it's Dude, not on. Yeah, as soon as you can get through Yogi, then you'll have to beat me. Oh, yeah, the gauntlet. It's not uh, It's not in the Google Play Store for Canada. No, they don't have it on Android yet. It's only on, on iOS. Oh, F that F. I know, I know, I know. They're going to get it on Android before we will, noob. Chill. Well, Android, <laughs> Android is... Jeez. I think Android is out of a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> I think Android is out of about a month or two, but um. <laughs> so yeah, the, the... show me your old face. <laughs> okay. Go use you. my old face. Thank you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I can't. I like interrupted like <laughs> three sentences in a row. Like he's like a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit. Hoorah to me. So so for those that are not in Canada, New Zealand, or Australia. Uh, the rest of us have to wait a few weeks, and then Android is going to be probably at least a couple of months. Um, hold on, I got a couple of questions here. I got people in my in my Twitch channel, but I'm, I'm trying to get them all congregated over on Obi-Wan X2. If you're over on my channel right now, you only get the audio, but there will be highlights later. Mm -hmm. So, Obi-Wan X2 on Yogi Zilla on Twitch, for those that are not watching us live. FYI. But, uh, so yeah. Back to back to Hearthstone. <laughs> you guys are having way too much fun. That's, that's, I, wait, April Fools was last week, guys. Okay, come on. Sorry again. You're getting you're getting diluted. Please continue with your news while Obi does something weird with the microphone. Over at Hearthstone. And by the way, we talk about Hearthstone like every time I'm trying to concentrate. We talk about Hearthstone every week on VGO. Apparently, it's a big game. Apparently, I've got against this. Yes, I know. It comes out on my. Ghetto Android, I will definitely check it out. I know, Mich I know Michelle is big in, and then, you know, yeah, she's big. In, she's got a big into it. And it's funny because Michelle is, is is actually more like the average Hearthstone player, someone that would normally not even look at a TCG game or a deck building game, but mm -hmm. it, it's Blizzard is great at making any kind of genre accessible. Not so much you know watering it down, but they make it so that people it's not as overwhelming. You could break into it. Like Heroes of the Storm, that's another big one, and I love my MOBAs. I hope he does too. Like, mm -hmm. oof. We're gonna try to get in, get in on that uh, technical alpha, but uh, anyway, say so, Hearthstone, you gotta get on it, man. Just just download it on your on your on your computer. It's, it's Mac and Windows compatible, and we can play together, man. It'd be fun. I'll school yeah. you. I already had I, I had a couple of friends join this week, and I, I've been uh, training them. One of them is already whooping my butt, so I have to tell you something. <laughs> and I was in on the beta. I mean, eh, whatever. But um. Another another thing. What else do they have cooking up for Hearthstone? There's a bunch of stuff actually. I'm not gonna go through it all, during the show. Again, we want to get to the main discussion as, as quick as possible. But there's a lot of stuff coming up. Adventure mode. Um, they're doing. They might bring the expert duels back, so so you could d uh, duel against bots and farm more more gold and be more prepared when you fight against human players. Because uh, that was a thing in the beta, and they got rid of it for whatever reason. Um, and they, they said that Adventure Mode should be coming next because it, it was supposed to come right up pretty much soon after the iPad release, the iPad app release, or iOS release. So that's a big thing. Uh, oh, and the biggest thing that I, I noticed is now when you get disconnected, OB, I don't know if you noticed, if you get disconnected now, you can actually rejoin your match, which is great, especially if you're playing ranked because so many games were losses. If your internet took a crap, it was an automatic loss because you couldn't rejoin the match. You know, right. so now Does you that can stop rage quitters from uh, benefiting. Is that what it's it's for? Like if you if you quit a match, you automatically lose, correct? See, no. If you quit, if you actually physically quit, because you're sending a command to the server saying you quit, 
Oh, that's okay. different. That would, that would count as a loss because of rage quit. But if you get disconnected, like if you lose, just suddenly lose internet connection, or the app crashes, the, or the, someone turns off their internet connection when they're losing. See, yeah, if they if they pull the plug, I don't know. Yeah, they won't. They won't get in trouble for that because they're actually not like you said. That you have to actually have to give them the command to actually. Yeah. Even if you alt F four. They're actually they're not seeing that. They, you have to actually say quit or concede or whatever. Yeah, yeah. See, people used to people have pl- used to pull pull plugs a lot on uh, on Xbox Live or dashboard. Mm-hmm. It was really easy to do that. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think you have to actually formally quit or concede for it to count as a loss. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a good thing to be able to rejoin those matches because it, it, it's still kind of in a growing. It's going through growing pains. So. That f- for a little while you were getting disconnected randomly, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, it wasn't good because you were losing matches that you had in the bag, you know. Uh, what else? What else do we got coming up? So for people, for wrestling fans, you know, Re- WrestleMania 30 just passed this past week, and I didn't even, it just, I didn't even know. To be honest, I've been into wrestling for a long time. I used to <laughs> really love it, but yeah. but you know, I it, I kind of get nostalgic whenever I hear people talking about it and being really excited about wrestling. And I'm hearing some things like, uh, you know, supposedly WWE, not the WWF, don't, get, don't confuse them, they're different. <laughs> their, their, their network is, is really under the mark. Uh, they need to, like, increase their profits by, like, 70% or something in order to keep the network going. And that's just to turn a slight profit or break even or something. Um, so, kind of scary. Scary time to be a wrestling fan. But uh, even more tragic news than that, um, the Ultimate Warrior... Passed away recently, and uh, his real name was James Helwig. He died at age 54, and, uh, and the crazy thing about it is he died just days after being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame on April 5th, I believe. So, uh, so you know, yeah, yeah, and Obi was talking about this with me uh, last time we chatted on the phone. I, I you know, I, you know, I remember Obi. I remember he he used to just have such a presence, even though I hated him for beating Hulk Hogan in WrestleMania six. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, he just, he put, that dude put on the show the energy, like, he just had, like, he was, he was crazy. I, that I sw- energy was constituted <laughs> from, uh, the many drugs that the I, did. Okay. All right, too soon, that too soon. crazy. Am I, am I out of bounds by saying he was a No, crazy? he was psycho, okay? Yeah, because well, he there, said some pretty just... crazy stuff as well, like, outside of his role as wrestling. Mm-hmm. He, he, he was not... Anyways, we won't. We won't, it doesn't get too controversial, but yeah, I mean, he, you know, <laughs> but let's give him his at least his uh, at least a, a day of not being bass. You know, he had his issues definitely, but as a wrestler, you have to give him props. He was he was he knew how to put on the show. Like I like I, in whenever his role as wrestler, yeah, I'll concede. In his role as a wrestler, he did a great job. Yeah, in his role as a human being, we can discuss <laughs> that. But in his role as Ultimate Warrior, the persona, he brought a lot to res- wrestling in it, and he definitely uh, yeah yeah. There's a praise for that for sure. Like, see, I I, I go back like the days I really lo- uh, really got into wrestling were like days of the Heart Foundation and, and they're Canadian. Ah, there you go. You, that's your people right there. Yeah, the screw job took place here in uh, Montreal. There you go. And uh, what else? Uh, oh, and uh, the Rockers. That's one of my favorite. The Rockers was one of my favorite uh, uh, tag teams. You know, uh, Marty Janetti and uh, Shawn Michaels, right? All right. 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 I'm trying to remember. That's right. Right. I can't remember now. Uh, so, I think so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. We'll just go on. But, yeah, you know. My, 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 definitely feeling some sadness and nostalgia there. But uh, Obi's like, I don't care. Moving on. No, I'm still trying to figure out why, like, half of the people in the Twitch chat right now have me on my on the left ear. And then half of them have me on the right ear. So, I'm still trying Because they're to... wearing their headphones wrong, probably. That's why. I, dude, it's confusing me. It's... <laughs> I'm kidding. Arr, anyway, I'm kidding. No, I don't yeah, really have ult- anything. I'm just Ultra trying Warrior to figure out these tech issues for everybody. Kind of sad. Um, yeah. It was another one of those days where everyone who never once talked about wrestling or Ultimate Warrior were all of a sudden uh, <laughs> Ultimate Warrior fans and really heartbroken about his loss. So Yeah. So, well, you know, that's the... <laughs> see, I'm going to say on that, I feel that's, that applies to everything. Like... We, yeah. we we take a lot of things yeah. for granted. Like for example, I always like I, the other day I just randomly thought it would be really sad if Dick Van Dyke died. 
But I don't watch any of his latest stuff. But when I watch like his old stuff, like when he was in Chibi Chibi Bang Bang and uh, Mary Poppins and stuff like that, I'm watching with, that with the family, you know, I'm like, I love Dick Van Dyke. He's so, so lovable. Dick Van Dyke show. I used to love watching that. You know, that's true. He's like fun. That's true. Yeah. You know, but we won't stop. Most of us won't stop to realize the loss until they are gone, and then we're like, "Damn, we re I really liked them," and then it's too late. <laughs> That's like, that, especially artists. No, there's no there's artists. Look, no, go ahead. I mean, there's a whole thing to see what happens. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. There's that whole thing. There's, sorry. There's that always. There's that thing that always happens with uh, artists and and you know celebrities where. You know, everyone the day before they die will like go on and on about how they're idiots and stupid and waste of skin, but then they'll die and all of a sudden they become martyrs and angels. Oh and yeah, misunderstood. And I feel sometimes that happens with uh, the wrong people. Now, ugh, I don't know how to phrase this properly, but death in itself isn't an accomplishment. <laughs> like I don't think. I think if you lead a good life and you die, that's when you deserve a lot of praise. But I, I think if you're not a good person to start with, then you die. It's not. It doesn't <laughs> automatically mean people should praise you because you died. Does that make yeah. any sense? Yeah, I get what you're saying. I see that happening on Facebook sometimes, where people are like, people like bad people died, and you're like, oh, he was misunderstood. I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> wow, I'm making dogs bark right now. Yeah, I'm reading the chat. <laughs> um, but no, Matt, to 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 come on your point, there is. The only time people actually reflect back and make them look like heroes is when they do die. Because, yeah, they're, yeah, of course, yeah. somebody's not going to say, well, that, uh, okay, let's use Ultimate Warrior. That Ultimate Warrior, he was a druggie, and a, you know, he, all, all he did is he did this, this, and this, and he beat his wife, and he hit his kids. And No, they're going to remember him for this, this, and this, the great things that he'd done. So that's yeah, just everybody's, that's just how everybody treats everybody when they die. It's not what yeah. they did wrong. But it's this weird absolution. I mean, uh, what, uh, the Westboro Baptist Church guy died, and everyone was like, yay, ding dong, the witch is dead. So it does <laughs> happen where people die, and people are like, good, I'm glad, right? But right. I, I understand your points, and this is something for a much d bigger debate. <laughs> much so, bigger debate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we obviously need a philosophical, uh, you know, introspective podcast to just talk about these things and just go off on complete tangents. Talk about the. We could talk. We could, I think we could take the most asinine of topics and make it into something deep. Like you know what's crazy? Ice cubes. You know I like ice cubes. Sometimes <laughs> it's like let's just say something stupid. Like that'd be the start of it. I think my point is, and and and, and we can stop after this. But my point is with Ultimate Warrior kind of highlights what happens with social media is that Ultimate Warrior, someone who's no one thought about outside of wrestling for years, someone who you know arguably wasn't that great to certain segments of the human population. Um, he passes away, and then all of a sudden you get social media just jumping on this. Ultimate Warrior was a, a great guy, and what a tremendous loss. And, it's, and, and I'm not making a judgment either way on that. I'm just saying it's an interesting phenomenon to watch when someone passes away, and then he becomes this huge figure in social media these days, whether it's deserved or not. And I, I, just, I don't know what that is. Any. It, it's, just, it's interesting to watch for me. Well, true. I think there's a few things in play there. If you want to get famous, fake your own death. And also, I, th I think as a courtesy, unless you're a real scumbag, like really just everybody yeah. can agree you're, you're, you're an enemy, you're, ev you're the evil guy, you know. There's, no, there's nothing redeeming about you. There's, you don't get the little grace period of, well, he just recently died. Let's focus on the good, like Obi said. But moving on. You, you guys, uh, I, know, I know if Obi was into Firefly. Did you ever get into Firefly? I love Firefly. <laughs> All right. Passion. Dude, Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Nathan Fillion is going to be making a cameo on Guardians of the Galaxy, supposedly. That's what I'm hearing. I love this guy. That movie. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I love this guy. Do you love this guy? I love Nathan. I love this guy. I wish he would get back to being, like, geeky Nathan Fillion. He's on that show. Um... Oh, Castle? Castle, and, and I'm sure it's good, but I wanted to get back to, like, doing geeky Nathan Fillion stuff. I want to be a swashbuckling hero again. Yeah, dude. He, you know what? Like, I, I've watched so Castle sweet. I watched Castle here and there. He's totally a man crush for me. And, like, I love the fact that he'll, he'll reply to his tweets and retweet your stuff. And he says the most random stuff. I, I, he's just great. Uh, I forget what he said the other day. Something about urinals and, like... 
how he'd like to have something to be able to do while he's going in a urinal. And I'm like, dude, that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, like, like an iPad in front, you can play a game or something. Yeah, I think he was talking about making special stalls with like a, a thing to hold your iPad so you don't drop it on or your iPhone or whatever, your Android, so you don't drop it in a toilet bowl. How long does it take for him to go pee, though? I mean, is this really something that needs well, I know he definitely kill time? Yeah, and well, he had a, another thing he said uh, was something about having a target in the toilet. You know, I think that's pretty. That's a good idea because a lot of people seem to have trouble aiming properly. Like they're going, they're hitting the wrong side and they're getting all that splatter all over their place. And then you're like doing that weird thing where you don't want to walk right in front of the urinal or next to certain angles. It's like okay, there's there's this piss all over the place. Let me get back over here and I'll shoot across the room. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, you, you know, it's been like over 10 years since Firefly was on, and I still secretly wish the Firefly would come back, but we know there's a lot of uh, bureaucracy involved with that. I've got a Firefly comic book somewhere here. Because they continue the Firefly story in comic book form, just like Buffy and uh, Angel. See, that's so cool, but... Fits. That's how you can get it. I can't find it right now, well, but yeah. Right, right. Well, um, yeah, Miss, Miss Nicholas. Don't... Don't link stuff like that in the chat. We're trying to have fun. Yeah, we, don't, we don't need we don't need you to be a douche and, and start doing that to us. So, anyway, moving on here. We're oh wow! To, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need that kind of stuff. This is a, just a talk show. It's not a porn site. Thank you very much. But anyway, JDK moving on here. Yeah. <laughs> doing some every week. We are you guys? We're, we're, are we moving on? Or are you guys continuing on this? Just oh look. So Tiger Claw, Tiger Claw's in the chat with us from all games. Latigra, hey. Sweet. Yeah, nice. We got a full party over here right now. Oh, so yeah, yeah. we oh, yeah. we were gonna talk about League of Legends, but uh, Matt, Matt, you don't play League, do you? Nope. You no interest in that kind of thing. We're like League of Stupid Stuff. Sh shout out to JVK uh, Gamer. I'm <laughs> trying to get everybody. <laughs> Le no, oh, wait, I know why you don't like it. The toxicity of the community, right? I think we talked about this before. Yeah, I'm a Redditor. I go on Reddit all the time, and sometimes I get, like, rogue League of Legends posts, and it sounds like the snobbiest, circle-jerky community. <laughs> yeah, it's there, there's a lot of elitism. You know, that, that, that's, that's something we're actually going to talk about, esports, and hopefully we get to that, about some of the bad things about that, how it breeds toxicity and elitism mm -hmm. in communities. But the game itself is great. If, you know what? Play it with us, with with Obi and and, and me, and uh, we'll get some other people together, and we'll play some private games against bots. It's lots of fun. Once you get rid of the ass hats, it's a great game. I really would love for you to join us on there. Because that, that, that's one of the main games we talk about. And so that actually, we originally started as kind of like a League of Legends podcast. But we said we need to branch out a little further than that. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in League of Legends. Um, I won't get all into it, but your uh, Ultra Rapid Fire mode is staying for now, it looks like. Gragas, I know uh, Obi is excited about this. Gragas is, has been buffed like crazy. <laughs> and, uh, and now he's more of a... What's going on? Okay, I don't know. It's more, so he, now he, now Dude, Greg is some... dance, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> I saw you looking you to the. I'm blind. And he's got the big keg. Greg is great. Let me tell you, that, that's that's for if there's any reason, if there's any any reason for Matt to play League of Legends is for that because Greg is drinks. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't. No, he's he, drunk. Yeah, he's, he's drunk. Scottish. He ca he carries a giant. He dry, a dude. He has a giant keg. And he drinks from it, and and like he just hobbles about. It's it's great. It's it's so much fun. I'm telling you. But uh, yeah, there's a lot about a lot more changes recently. We'll talk about some of them uh, next week probably. But I mean, there's there's been changes to Gragas. Uh, he's a lot more of a brawler now. So he's he's a true mage brawler. So he's a little more tanky. Yeah. I mean, he, I really like Gragas to begin with. I don't know. That's one of the people that Obi main. So definitely, um, they've done a lot of um. Changes to the summoner spells and the items, tons of stuff. We'll get, we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. But let's move on. So, real quick shout outs. You want to do the shout outs, Obi, or shall I? Yeah, I'll go ahead. <laughs> so, real big shout outs to people that are not here right now. We, I think we cover everybody in the chat. Um, SG and Jake McClenahan. McClenahan. My tell. Okay, I, I got his name for, right the Your first time. I'm butchering it. Huh? What? what? SG and Jake and Jake and Jake Neo Jake 
They get lots of love, much love for helping us out. Uh, rumors. I like Jake. Yeah, they're really good guys, and they're helping us put together some bumpers for our show, some music. So we got some. We got another. We got a few other shows coming out, and they're gonna help us uh, get this stuff together so we could hook it up. We do. <laughs> yes. Wow. Well, really... Ov, oh, I'm gonna kill you. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just reading the script, man. <laughs> who's the Who's the racy stuff from this? I'm gonna kill you. All right. Oh, match the blue, blue match the blue cursor. Now I know. Someone, someone's been erasing stuff. I know it, but good thing I know the stuff off the top of my head, pretty much. I'm not erasing stuff. I'm adding stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you added just. <laughs> You're already here. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> also, shout outs to Chip Sella, Sean Freeman, Matt Bradford. I really wish he could be here, and a, and a bunch of other people that have worked hard to get us featured on all game network. Were, were you pimping at our show too? You were, you were... I talk about you guys when, when I was on the show. I pimped it out on VGO and uh, and uh, Zombiecast. I know a zombie catcher did, but on VGO it's like you forgot about us completely. Guy, do you know what Freeman did? He went behind your back. He emailed Derek. He's like, "Do not let these jackholes onto All Games Network. They're gonna drag you down." I was there when he did it. And you're gonna Freeman thank him. That. Okay. You so, thank him. No, this is not a stream for Let's Move to Canada for Hearthstone. This is a stream. This is a podcast. Yeah. Freeman, Mister, I thought was Pimp Daddy, not anymore. He get, yeah. he comes off You're, as like the nicest supportive guy. No. <laughs> no challenge. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Stop challenge it. Accepted. Yeah. Yeah. I once and this is no joke, we were on a video chat. He had a puppy. He had a puppy and he was spraying uh, graffiti in the puppy's eyes right in front of me. That's terrible. He was terrible. And he was laughing about it too. I couldn't believe that. Well, he was team Lizzie and team Governor for a little while. He, I'm, I'm, so, I'm I love the guy, but I, I worry about him. I'm straight up waiting for him to come in and be like, what are you guys talking shit for? What the fuck? <laughs> he's he's going to ping the Skype, and he's going to make me add him to the call. No, Sean, Sean <laughs> is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I, I, that, is, that is genuine, Matt. He is, he is a stand-up dude. So That puppy thing is real, but he is still a stand-up dude. <laughs> Well, and I also recognize... Sarah McLaughlin in the background. <laughs> yeah! Just for pennies a day, you could save this puppy's life. The arms of an angel. From getting sprayed in the eye. From me, it's by Freeman. And putty. And putty. <laughs> He, oh he's my a great god, that was, that was a great rendition, whoever was doing that. I couldn't tell. It, it, it put a little tear in my eye, I don't know. I, got, I, I might have to get, start drinking right now. If you guys want to see a good one that my, uh, we made up in our unit, go. I'll, I'll give you guys a link after the show, but it's funny. It's, just, it's a recruiting video, and it's got like the, the song in the background playing, and, and then our, our, uh, our leader of the clan's like, oh, just for pennies a day can help us run our servers. <laughs> we really appreciate that Aww. everybody's loved here. We really want to convey the point that for only pennies a day, <laughs> it just goes over and over and over. It costs a coffee so every week. You can help Obi. Oh, run yeah. Our servers. And make sure that we can play the games that we love to play. <laughs> you know... <laughs> You know what? That's a very good point. That whenever they say for the for the cost of a cup of coffee a day, you can help support blah blah blah. But that's that a fun. True. I love when salespeople use that because, like, well, what kind of cup of coffee are you talking about? Like, cuppy coffee from like a mom and papa shop, or a little uh, a hole in the wall, or a, uh, little, one of the little Starbucks. grease trucks, or a Starbucks? Because Starbucks, you're almost spending ten dollars for a cup of coffee. If you do that. You know, thirty times in the month. That's three hundred bucks. Now, not. <laughs> so I'm I want to bitch at something right now. If anybody that works, owns, or portrays anything or has to do anything with Starbucks, I hate you on a personal level. Because yeah, there's no I, sense I in the world. Okay, now I understand the people that get those soy foamy latte, whatever the you guys drink. But if I go there and get just a plain cup of coffee with cream and sugar and the bitch is still eight dollars, kill. I'm done. No, yeah. no one No one should be getting traditional drip from Starbucks. That defeats the purpose. No oh, no, I we went there because of my wife. She she likes the you know, the iced mocha, whatever the fluffy whatever the crap she gets, but I just want coffee. I'm not 
or I'll get like a espresso shot with you know in the coffee or something, something that's made there. But eight bucks, come on. Here's what you got to do though: uh, get the strawberries and cream. Much. Get the strawberries and cream. It'll change your life. Is what I'm saying. Now, what you got to do is actually you got to go with your wife. And when they put the strawberry cream on the table, you make her take it, and you take her other drink, and then you walk out so it doesn't look like you actually are going to drink it. But so once you get like to your car, and, blamer. yeah. So, so once you get to your car, and no one's watching you. You taste it, and it is delicious. It is it is fantastic. Sorry, Yogi. I know Yogi's like we gotta go, but strawberries and cream. I'm the one usually saying that. <laughs> we, we gotta, gotta hurry up. Like, we gotta stay on time. <laughs> I can stay a little later because I know I'm, I'm the cause that we're running late. So, <laughs> Hey, uh, let me tell you this. Uh, first of all, I didn't finish all the shout-outs. We cannot forget Tim Curtis, who no. uh, handles all the social media all games. A great friend of ours. He's been coming to my streams, to OB streams when we're on Twitch, playing whatever we're playing. You know, whether it's a Retro Friday thing, which is the thing that we're doing, or League of Legends, or Hearthstone. He's there. He's, he's the man. And I know he's got a really busy schedule because he's got a, a day job that takes a lot out of him. And then he's working at night to do all the social media stuff and support all of these podcasts and shows and everything. It's crazy. It's crazy. He's the man. But uh, any, anyone else we missed, we did not forget you. We was trying to move things along. But I want to say, tell your call in the chat, and Stan agrees, and I agree, Cuban coffee, definitely. If you have Cuban coffee in your area, that's, that's way better, a way better way <laughs> to spend your money, you know, because they do that, they do that thing where, like, they put, like, the, um, they've, like, foam the sugar and the, and the milk in there somehow. It's crazy. Mm. I've seen them when they do it. And I still don't get the process. It's oh, it's amazing. It's it's strong, but it's not overpowering. It's oh, it's good. It's good. It's like me. And I'm Puerto Rican. I love the Cuban coffee. Oh, and Cuban sandwiches. Cuban sandwiches are good too, with the roast beef, and uh, they put a garlic butter spread on the bread, oh, and then they butter. and then they iron they iron the bread. Una plancha. Lo, lo ponen una no, they, plancha y después. They they panini it. Sí, sí, sí. Press it. Yeah. Sí, la panini, eh, lo ponen en la panini, eso mismo, sí. Eh, 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 Matt oh. Bradford, él eh, eh, habla español. Él es eh, de Canon. <laughs> Obi-Wan X2, no habla shit. Let's go English here, guys. <laughs> That's for the Latinos and all. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Paranormal Activity, the marked ones, and there were Latinos in that. Does that count? Just don't call a, a, a female, a Latin female Latino, because then you're trying to say she's a hermaphrodite, just saying. Latino and Latina, uh, though it's collectively. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good thing you found your one. You don't have to worry yeah, about that anymore. Yeah, I found my one, and she's Croatian, Croatian Canadian. Cro yeah, more Canadian. because She's lived here for a long time. There we go. I know. How to, I know how to speak Croatian a little bit. That's a thing. <laughs> Over it. That's a thing. <laughs> nice way to be racist. Let's move on. Jackal. Hey, I love when people say, "Oh, you speak Mexican," you know, like, "Okay, thank you." <laughs> oh, yeah. Then you should I go. Yes, mistake. I do. Hi, where are you? <laughs> I speak straight English to them. They're like, "That's not Mexican." No, I speak Puerto Rican, actually. <laughs> arriba, arriba, andale, andale. We, we we got a lot of slap me. He's got pretty. He Matt can roll his R's. Arriba. <laughs> That's a pretty good. Red Rojas. 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 Yeah, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. And shout out to Fred. I know we mentioned him already. But shout out to Fred because he was the first person that gave me a chance to to kind of pimp myself out on all games. Because I was on, he was the first show I was on on, on all games. Uh Gaming History 101. Let's put him in. Yeah. Fred Rojas, aka Spiders Venom. How can I forget my my friend, my brother from another mother. All Games is a great network of people. You got your yeah. Chipsella, you got your friend. Like every every show that's on there, you end up knowing every one of them, and they're all they're all good people. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Great. Definitely. And we're, and we're not and we're not biased by any means. <laughs> We've been pipping out All Games before we even got put on the network. Everybody that's been watching from the beginning knows that. You know, it's like it's just like Matt says, uh, just good people that are just down to earth. You know. And it's very, they're all engaging, you know? It's not a show they're putting on. On and off the air, they're just engaging people. Yeah, very supportive. And, uh, I mean, I, I keep in contact with a lot of... I talk to you guys outside of this. Sometimes, except Obi. I block him. <laughs> I, he, dude, he does, for real. Because I try to... 
I seriously tried to Skype him the other day, and he was Did online. You? He was online, and I Skyped him like three times, and he just ignored my call. I'm like, douche. So I went to another Skype. I went to another Skype, <laughs> and I tried to call him again. And he didn't say, hey, who is this or anything. He's like, nope. Done. Bloop. So, therefore, what I was going to ask Matt, remember that, Yogi, what I was going to ask him? You know, for never mind. I'm not going to ask it no more because he ignores what? me. I didn't ignore you. I, I, no, first of all, I have Skype on my Android phone. It's probably on all day. I probably missed those calls. If I saw your smiling face on my Skype, I would oh, drop man. everything. I would drop my baby to nope. talk to you. <laughs> child. If I, were, if I was like, time to Now, definitely bed, not because then you would endanger a child. Are you serious? Well, we you got just, You would endanger a kid just to talk to me? What kind of person are you? Our floors are padded. First of all, kids have to get sloppy <laughs> once in a while. He's got shag carpets. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Well, it's hard with most of the places. It's got to do that. Who wasn't dropped by their parents constantly? I mean, it's just something that parents do, right? Right. Me. <laughs> and I didn't drop my kid ever. But uh, isn't it? Oh. I don't think. Okay. All right. Nope. I got my parents after this. I, I think if you don't drop your your baby, you at least have to allow them to like throw a fit and roll off the sofa at least once or the bed. I've done that many times. <laughs> you know. Yeah. What? I wasn't watching him. So it's my fault. Yeah. times if you if you're around a, a baby enough, no matter how much you love your baby or someone else's baby, when they start throwing that fan, they go, yeah, they put the fist in the air, they're like, Meh! <laughs> they spit, they're about to punch you. They turn to like a little demon. It's like, all right, before I I shake you up and put you down. <laughs> no, no, no baby shaking. That's the number one rule of parenthood. Yeah, no baby shaking. But you know, everybody has that point where they're like, okay, I need to take a breather. Take a breather, you know. Cause especially if it's your first one, you're, you're gonna be like, you're gonna get flustered. And nothing that can prepare you for that. Nothing. No, no it tests your patience. That's for sure. Oh, I'm trying to give you a hug there, Obi. I was kind of ringing your neck. Uh, Breaking the fourth wall again. Oh yeah. And the fifth. And maybe the sixth. There is, supposedly there is a, a constant. <laughs> I was trying something new, I'm sorry. Okay, just just keep going with that. I'm not even gonna say I don't, I don't even wanna finish my thought. I feel violated right now. <laughs> oh you're gonna you're gonna talk about a sixth dimension. Have you guys watched that show Cosmos on uh <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys watched Big Guns and Titties? Huh? That's what, what that said. <laughs> or, or, or Stan Farina saying in the, in the chat that live cam stripping, big business in, in uh, is it pronounced Bucharest? <laughs> Bucharest? I always forgot to pronounce that, but Good that's a, Bradford. that's a big business like every, overseas anywhere, really. Big business anywhere. You gotta take off my jacket. Cam girls, except in the States, you just gotta get people ah, overseas and do it. He said, "Don't talk about Cosmos." Oh, oh, nice. Oh yeah. Hey, you might want to zoom in the camera a little bit, Matt. What, what I wa what I was gonna say though is that there is actually this is why he's showing off his shirt. For those that are not watching on uh, on the video, no, no, I didn't even know live on vi or on YouTube. You know, I'm gonna just it's keep like going. I'm gonna finish with thought before Matt derails us some more. Bucharest. That's what I said. Oh, I said rest. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I'm I'm. Participating in the podcast, I don't consider it derailing. And we're all in agreement that Matt is derailing us. Right? Well, I was just gonna say real quick, there is a concept as fifth wall, and and the episode sixteen, which I believe aired tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, for those on a live show on on all games, you know, we talked about immersion. We talked a little bit about the fourth wall, but it is a fifth wall, and the, and there's a whole other discussion about what that is. It's crazy. There's a, it's mind-boggling stuff. What's the fifth wall? We won't get into it. That was like that was. N n next time we'll talk about it, maybe. You know what? We got a show coming up. Our next show coming up. You're gonna. I, I know you're gonna love this, man. We're gonna. It's gonna be a show dedicated to the behind more the behind the scenes of gaming, game theory, game mechanics, the psychology of it, strategies. Like just taking oh. and totally analyzing. Cause there's nothing really out there like that. There's only a couple of hand uh, uh podcasts podcast I can think of that do that kind of thing. And then we could talk about things like stickiness, immersion, the fourth wall. You know, um, microtransactions and all that kind of crap. You know, it's like the WTF of video gaming podcasts. There you go. But no, uh, no Mark Maron. 
Maron. Maron. <laughs> Maron. 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 I love that episode. That's like my favorite episode. Where he's like, it's, it's not a French name. It's just Mark Maron. <laughs> I love Mark Maron. He's so crusty. He is, but in a good way. Yeah. We we got a we got a Mark Maron over at, at All Games. His name is Derek H. He's crusty but lovable. Yeah, he's crusty. <laughs> crusty. And lovable. That's true. All right, what I've got two features you're letting me pick from, right? Or yeah, well, yeah. It's, let me uh, just make sure they're properly tagged. Look at those two. We'll do a quick. We're gonna do a quickie. Now, Obi, before we go to this quickie, you wanna open it up again, o Obi? Sure. All right, do okay. your thing again. Do the same way you did it before. I was. I'm ready for it now. <sighs> quickie. Here we go, guys. <laughs> this is a quickie. Every. Now and then we throw out a quickie. It's about 10 minutes where we're just going to just rapidly talk about one thing. This last thing right here we want to talk about right now, The Walking Dead Season 4, Final Recap, which is the last episode, and predictions for Season 5. Game of Thrones is back. Yay. The TWD seems to be all but forgotten. Now we're going to talk Ooh. about this. Matt, the first thing I want to ask you, mm -hmm. what did you think of The Walking Dead, the final, the finale of season four? Uh, it was it was a lot of build up. I, I don't think it, I got as many answers as I wanted to about Terminus. Um, but there was a lot of <laughs> there was, what what they did in that episode is there was some character resolution. I mean, we finally got to see Rick decide on a path. Rick is no longer going to be second guessing himself. Rick is now badass Rick, and that that happened at the campsite. Yes, uh, when he, when he, yeah, finally, there's no more, there's no more questioning his stuff anymore. Uh, and then Carl saw that for the first time that his dad's a badass, and Carl kind of backed down from being a little dick about it. Um, so I think what this season did is it, it got us to a place where all the characters are different. Glenn's Glenn's like a crazy mercenary now. Psycho. Maggie's no, yeah, M Maggie's no longer a farm girl. She's like Laura <laughs> Croft. Maggie um, mm. and Abraham, my new favorite character on the entire series, is a big soft teddy bear. He's gonna probably die in a couple episodes. So I think. <laughs> so I think to, yeah, getting to Terminus was cool. Uh, the payoff wasn't that great for me, but I think that's the whole next season is about Terminus. I'm still not convinced they're cannibals. Everyone wants to go the cannibal route. I know we saw the bones and everything like that. And sorry, spoilers, but we're talking about the Walking Dead season finale. So and I'll wrap up here soon. Um, so I don't think they're cannibals. I think one possible theory is they're slave traders or they deal in human commodities because everyone's in those cargo mm. things and they're, they're really careful not to kill them. Uh, I think this could be leading up to the, the whole Negan encounter because that's, that's Negan's bag, man. He's, he's trying to build a civilization. So I don't know. I'm anxious about next season. I love the line at the end. I wish they could have kept it to what the comics did. Um, and saying that, I'm now gonna say I can't remember what the comics did. There was that last line that Rick did in the show. It's like they're they're gonna we're the wrong people to screw with. Yes, so they picked the they picked the wrong people to like poop around with. He it was really PG version because in the comics it's something like they picked the wrong motherfuckers. To, I'm sorry. Yeah. They no, the no, I was fine. But it was it was much more badass, and it gave you much more of a yeah feeling. Yeah, yeah. Well, the comic overall is much more visceral. I mean, we know that much. Yeah, and and they set it up that Carl was going to get shot, and I love that they did that, that there was that whole scene where, like, are they going to kill Carl? Like, what are they doing? Here? Yeah. So I loved how they played around with us. That. So those are my impressions. I honest, I was satisfied. I thought there would be a bigger payoff about Terminus, but it's definitely going to keep me hooked for next season. What about you guys? Well, I think we all knew that they weren't going to wrap up Terminus in a way we appreciate it. it was gonna, we knew it was going to be a cliffhanger. Every season's been kind of a cliffhanger, you know? Mm -hmm. So we knew that it, we, they finally would reach Terminus, but something would happen to make us go, oh, crap. You know, like, right. this wasn't what it cra it's cracked up to be. I, I, I agree. I, don't, I think Cannibals would be too easy, and we kind of would expect easy, that, right. especially because of the Walking Dead video games from Telltales. You know, Telltale Games, has, they, they had that, that twist in there already. <clears throat> so, I think that what I, 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 human trafficking is a good one, but I think maybe it might be something ritualistic, or a lot simpler. They're keeping the people preserved so that they can use them as bait when they go out in the field. They can use them as human bait and get supplies while the zombies are distracted, munching on the live bait. 
That's a you good know? one too, yeah. You know, that's why they, they're, they're making sure they don't kill them because the zombies are not attracted to dead flesh, rotting flesh. So, I keep just, them alive I mean, and you go behind this, Yeah, I mean, I just, like, like you said, I think it's too easy for cannibals. I think if the writers were in a room, they'd be like, what's happening at Terminus? I think the very first answer would be cannibals and they toss that out the window. It just seems like just a cliche thing to do. Yeah, yeah. And they'd be good about giving us some 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 uh, knuckleballs. I'm going to give a little yeah. c- call back there for Sean. Some knuckleballs, not curveballs. <laughs> some knuckleballs. Yeah. So I, I think it's I, I think they're going to surprise us. I think they're on the right path. I'm glad that that Rick is back and he's not a blubbering, you know, pansy anymore. Cause people were getting off Tim Team Rick and you know Team Rick all the way. You know who else are you going to follow in Apocalypse? Not those cr- other crazy people. But uh, I, I think that. Yeah, we know you'd be, you'd be throwing your friends behind you like, I'm going to get away, baby. Oh, he wouldn't do that. He's an honorable gentleman. <laughs> I know I'd be dead. It'd be like a news report, like there might be zombies. I'd get like a shotgun to the face immediately. <laughs> Yogi, I'd but, save you, though. Anyway, I mean, yeah. with this one... I kind of, me and my wife were talking throughout the, the season four, catching up to everybody, you know? And we're talking and saying, well, how do you think it's going to go? How do you think, you know, we pretty much were getting it. We were kind of expecting it that way, to end that way, because we know there's another season coming. So we didn't, I don't know. I really, you guys really much, pretty much said it all, actually. I don't really have anything new to say. No, but actually, I really didn't have a see good perspective, it. though. Coming in from like someone who's just caught up, like you've taken a lot of Walking Dead in, whereas we've mm-hmm. like waited weeks, weeks. So when you got to Terminus, did it feel like the momentum kind of like? It, yeah, it felt like it just it was just ninety miles an hour. Then all of a sudden, it, it blew its load and went limp. I mean, just that's just yeah. how it felt to me. My wife was like, "What? Is <laughs> yeah. that really done? Is it really done now?" Yeah, well, there's right. another season coming out. Well, that was that was the last show. The last. I don't even want to watch the fifth season. So yeah. I mean, I'm like, please, I want somebody to watch this. <laughs> I'm just, well, Obi's, Obi's a scaredy cat, okay? You know, you get... Uh, well, just tell, you, tell your wife, Obi, how else could it have ended? I mean, would would it have been satisfying if they got to Terminus and everything was happy-go-lucky and there was no sense of tension, no no doubt that there, there was bad things going on? And everybody was like, hey, we're having, let's have a barbecue. Throw another shrimp in the barbecue. Yay! Woo! Woo! woo. No, 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 that's no good. Well, it used to be a time when, like, seasons of TV told a whole cohesive story where there was a beginning, middle, and end, and they, they could live in their own little universe. And that's why I want out of Walking Dead. But every time there's a season finale, it's like, it's everything that the season was building up to, it just kind of falls flat, like the prison confrontation. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Even, yeah, they kind of rush... the first season. What's that, I mean, even at, at near the end of the first season... Yeah. When they were in the, uh, you know, moving towards the, uh, what's that big building where they Oh, the CDC the center. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then that came to like, okay, we got to get the fuck out of here because it's going to blow up. Right. Really? That was... You guys yeah, suck. Just, Get me just into freaking kind of shows up. that suck. <laughs> but that's the strength of it because you're really interested, right? Like, leading up to that, you're really into it. That's, that's well, the No, can I not wait till season five starts? Definitely not. I'm, I'm, I've already got my freaking... DVR set. My wife's like, that's my night. Not on this channel. It's not. No. Yeah, it's mine. You know? Woman. <laughs> yeah. We, we're still old school. We can only do two shows at a time. We can't do four or five yet. You know? That's cute. That's cute. We're not up with the times. My DVR only does two. But... So Man, now, predictions. Predictions, guys. We kind of talked about how the season four went. How do we think season five is going to go? And people in chat, I want you guys to uh, pop out in here too. Uh, all games chat and even Twitch chat. Tell me how you guys think season five is going to start, mm. Matt. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pimp this out for Matt real quick because I know you guys had Lou Temple on over at ZombieCast, and he was yeah. the guy that played Axel. That was a great show, dude. I I just got a chance to hear the whole thing, and he provided. Cool. Yeah, I like how him and uh, Matt Moak took over the show for a little while. Matt Moak over from the, the Talking Dead. Back. and uh, Yeah, we yeah. back and like, just go for it, guys. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I mean, they were just like completely engaging each other. Like, they've known each other for a long time, so it was cool. But it's great the way they compared. 
I think they did a really good job of discerning how zombies would be in real life, realistically, and, and what makes sense, what kind of decisions make sense in a real framework, and then what makes sense for entertainment purposes. Because even in the chat right now, this is a backdrop for what you guys want to discuss. I know you have something to say, Matt. They're talking about how they would have liked the season finale to end. Like, you know, Stan is saying, Stan Freeman is saying, to make the last episode perfect, they, they should have grabbed the one dude from Terminus and pull him into the train with him and rip him to pieces after he mocks them. You know, and then uh, someone else said uh, it would have been, it, it should have ended, Opti over from All Games also says, uh, should have ended with the blonde kidnapped girl on a table with her limbs being chopped off. So I guess some people are demanding more carnage. There wasn't enough carnage in that last episode, and we're kind of expecting that. But I think it was I think it was good for what it is for setting up season five. Alright, so go on, Matt. What are you what are you thinking? I think Obi has a point here. Good point, good point. <laughs> <laughs> And go and Stan in, in Twitch chat stated it too, and then that would have been nice, especially if and still alive, and you just cauterize the wounds. So then she's just you know no limbs, no nothing, just a body there with a head, and everything's good. She's still living. Yeah. <laughs> that would be and there's hey, there's one of your bait, your you know your bait for Let's one see. of. <laughs> hey. That's well, they've gotten dark before. Very dark. They get almost well, as dark as I get. I mean, that's pretty freaking... Hey, well, the kid killing is midnight. Uh, predictions for Season 5, it's going to be Terminus for at least a few episodes because that dude who plays the mm -hmm. dude, I don't remember his name, he's been <laughs> cast. Like he, He's going he's gonna to be a regular, so it's something to do with Terminus. Um, I, I hope, to God, it's a Negan season. I hope that we find out Terminus isn't that bad, they just overreacted somehow, and that Negan comes knocking on the door. I think they need to move into that territory because that, to me, is the best part of The Walking Dead is that character, Negan, who's the governor times a thousand. Um, <laughs> they, need, they need an evil per Like, they need a villain in that season. They used to have... Like, you don't have that person that... The governor was great, but you don't have a threat anymore. Zombies aren't a, a huge threat for these guys right. anymore. They kind of they treat them like bugs now. And if they get swarmed, that's, that's one thing, but... Zombies in that show are just now like, okay, we need to add zombies because things are getting a little boring. Let's throw them in. Um, so I think you need a, a human villain, and I think that's what we're going to see next season. Like a new villain. I'm not, I, I think I agree, and we're going to wrap this up because uh, everybody's demanding we move on to our feature discussion. I know Matt has to leave soon. So uh, what I'm going to say, first they said, uh, Stan, Stan said, he doesn't want, uh, he, he said, uh, don't put the blonde in there, because have you heard Beth sing? Yeah, we don't want any more of that. <laughs> I like, she's cute. Like she that. is cute, oh, wow. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty, but that's actually better than the way she sings. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say I do agree they need a villain, and they need a conflict, a big conflict that isn't zombies. And that isn't uh, infighting. And at least a villain that isn't this almost likable person. No morally gray. Like someone that you just hate so much that no one's going to be like, oh, I'm team whatever. Because even with the governor, people will find any ways to justify, well, he went through a lot of bad stuff. And, oh, boo-hoo. But he was still crazy. You know, the governor and Shane, I, I, I just never could get on board with them. They were bad guys, no matter how you chop it up. But anyway, moving on. So our feature discussion. We're gonna, this is inspired by Stan Farina, and we've been plugging him a lot because he's going to be uh, doing some work f with us, uh, collaborating over with us at uh, Geeky Antics. And, um, yeah, big oh, things again happen. with Geeky Antics? What's, oh, Stan. Again with it, yes. Cause we're doing big things there. What That's, do you mean again with it? Are you not on board with the Geeky Antics? We've said, just... we've said Geeky Antics as much as we've said all games. We give oh. love to you both. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, is that, uh, I, I'm just wondering because Stan's in the chat there and I've been, I've been chatting with him. Is he from Geeky Antics? Oh, yeah, he's part of our team. Yep. Oh, hi, Stan. How's it going? Matter of fact, there's a full team roster on there. You can see the bios of the people that are on there on, on our team. Uh, it'll be on the left hand side of the site, geekyantics.net. You'll see all the people there, and there's a little page that shows you all the people that are in the gang. The gang. But uh, th this is the topic. This is our feature discussion for tonight, and hopefully we, uh, can wrap this up before Matt has to leave, but it's a big one, a, a, a really big one. I think we've all thought about, and we can all talk about. When is a free? When is free to play really pay to win? So you know, there's a lot of free games out there, 
And they, you know, especially MMOs, they're going to a free-to-play model. Because, let's face it, the, the bus already left for a you know, monthly subscription rate. And I don't know why ESO has even gone into that route. I mean, we talked last week, World of Warcraft peaked at, in 2010. And the MMOs have been going downhill as far as, uh, you know, the, the, the onboarding rate, you know, and, and how, how committed people stay to those kind of games. And then you throw in a monthly rate. Mm. But then again, on the flip side, well, free-to-play isn't what it's cracked up to be. So let's dig into this, because uh, specifically in Hearthstone, uh, Stan and Stan and a couple of people I introduced to the game said that, you know, Stan, actually, Stan specific words, I like what he said, he said, he just writes me out in Hearthstone out of nowhere, and, and he goes, so Hearthstone is about money, dot, 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 and I already knew he was frustrated just from reading that text, yeah. and, but I don't think that's a pay-to-win game, so let's talk about what, where is the line between, you know, the, the free, it's free to play, but obviously they need to make money. But when does that need to make money so overwhelming that it's clearly a pay to win game? I think Hearthstone. Uh, let me ask you a question about Hearthstone. If we were to start, if I were to start tomorrow with someone else who had never played that game before, and he came into the game with $100 and I came in with $0, and he had full access to everything they sold in that game, could he have an advantage over me? Buying better cards, better systems. He'd have an advantage, but it's not a guaranteed win. I let me tell you, advantage is a pay to win. You're paying for the advantage to win. See, I disagree. That's, so uh, yeah, can we let, 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 me, let me give a definition of pay to win and see if you guys agree with it first? Okay. I I say pay to win in this purest sense is when the only way you can be competitive in the game, whether it's on a casual or hardcore basis, because I believe you can be competitive in the, and, and be a casual player. You still be passionate about it, but you're just not really hardcore. Like That's not the only thing you do and you dedicate your life to, right? But you still want to compete. You still want to rise up the ranks. You still want to be able to win and increase your chances of winning, right? That's fair. Hmm. So I think a pure pay-to-win scenario is one where the only way you can remain competitive is if you pay money. So in order for a game to say it's truly free to play, it needs to have some sort of balancing where free to play players, the people that stick to the free model, have a chance to beat the people that do invest money, especially the ones that invest a lot of money. But do they have a chance? Because we're talking about time commitment as well here. You Obi? Uh, oh, so you're making the argument of time commitment as, as a form of currency. Because, well, because you just, you, I mean, part of your pay-to-win definition is, um, uh, I'm trying to back up, you're, it's, it's not, pay, it's paying for the advantage, paying to keep, stay competitive. My argument is that to stay competitive in a lot of these games, you have to buy those advantages or else you're going to be falling behind a lot of these other players who can pay for those advantages. If I'm just going to grind it out for those things, like, say there's a suit of armor or there's a special gun in Battlefield 4, you can buy it here, or you can grind it out for a week and get it. By the mm -hmm. time I get through that week, that other person's bought another gun. So that that variance in uh, advantages, it, it completely throws off the game. It's, it's not a fair arena anymore. You can say that, yeah, I still have the opportunity to play the game and get the exact same things, but when you give people a chance to buy advancements and, and speed up their time, their game time, I think it, it completely offsets the balance. Well, see, now, that's tell me... Wait, tell yeah. me now, tell me one game, mm -hmm. and think hard, because I can't think of any. Tell me mm -hmm. one game that is absolutely free to play to where you can't buy anything extra. Or Sorry, new, repeat that? Or bigger. Ask one game that you can yeah. think of that you've ever played in your whole life, or yeah. you've ever heard about, that you yeah. can't buy extra stuff or pay to, pay, pay to win. How's that? Halo 3. Halo 3. That was... But seriously, though, like, Halo 3, or before Pay to Win came in, multiplayer games were, the more you played, the more stuff you got. So the people who mm -hmm. had the best stuff were the people who put in the time, not the money. And to right. me, well, that's... Yeah. And, and this is kind of like Hearthstone, and if you guys you guys know me, I, yeah. we, me and both Yogi play uh, War Thunder. War Thunder is the same exact way. You can mm -hmm. start from level 1, and you have your level 1 planes, and and just do the countless hours and hours and hours of grinding, 
the mm-hmm. points, or you can say, hey, I'm just going to stick $50 on my account. Oh, I can go buy that plane just because I paid some money because you get a free gift. Mm-hmm. And then so you get the best plane in that tier no matter what. Right. So people that are just starting out, if you're starting out and I'm starting out, well, I threw $50 on my account. Guess what? I got a freaking Mark One, same plane as you did, but I have all the armor, all the bullets. I can rip you to shreds. Right. And you're going to level really faster. Not fair. But yeah, it's, it, but it, it, you can't really say that Yes, if you don't want to put money to a game, yes, that's fine. That's your prerogative. It is a free-to-play. You can play for free regardless. But those are the people, I mean, you can't be mad at somebody that actually wants to actually spend actual real money on a video game when it's supposed to be free-to-play. I can't be mad at them. No, that's absolutely their choice. But you can't say that it's not fair either because they're choosing to make that commitment where you're not. Well, the co- choosing to spend money isn't a commitment. It's I have more money. It is a commitment. No, it's not. <laughs> it is a commitment. If you choose to spend money anywhere, you're committing this to whatever you're doing, even if it's to buy a pack of cigarettes or to buy a a, 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 a bottle of Mountain right. Dew. Yeah, by that definition, commitment is I'm invested in this game financially. But my mm-hmm. version of commitment is I'm invested in this game in terms of skill, building my skill, getting to that level honestly. Right. Um, and right. I, I well, think that's, and that's where the difference is. Yeah. And that's where the, like, the MMOs and all the other stuff come in because then you actually start from level one. You can't buy a, a set of gear unless you do it illegally. Uh, you have to actually grind up you know, through Diablo, World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Hearthstone, you can get packs and stuff, but you're not mm-hmm. getting any one card. You can't just what sit about- there through a deck of cards and say, I want this card, this card, and this card, and I'll buy them. You can't do that. It's got to be packs. And you might get lucky. You might get the rarest card in the game. It's just mm-hmm. because you opened 100 packs doesn't mean... I guarantee you, Yogi, i seen the game. Yogi has got into a level 5. I think it was a Warlock before he really fell in love with him. He was mm-hmm. level 5. The guy he was playing against was some odd reason was like level 20 or 15 or 16. He smoked his ass. It doesn't matter about the cards. It's how you play the game, how you strategize the win. Because if you can start out with your cards, yes, it is the luck of the draw. But if you play your cards right, that's how you win. You don't win just because, yeah. oh, because you can only have two, like two, like board clearing, say, let's say, like an incinerate. You can only have two of those. Mm-hmm. You know, or well, horse play uh, might be the exception to the rule that I haven't played it. But from what you're talking about, that seems to be a great fine balance where if I can come in right. and someone who spent money. And I'm totally for that. And going back to your point, I mean, it absolutely is your choice if you want to spend money in a game. That's not, mm-hmm. what, I'm, that's not what I'm about. My thing is, I'm more... Mad's the wrong word. I'm more just pissed off. <laughs> pissed off, sorry, a better <laughs> word. I'm just... I'm, I'm, I don't frustrated. like how that's... That, fr- I'm frustrated how developers are setting up this and not... They're setting up this arena where it is possible. Take a guy like me, you know, like, I... I and, and we're, we're all in the same boat. Like, we have our commitments. We have our bills and stuff like that. Uh, I, I don't have as much discretionary income as I had when I was a teenager or when I was in my 20s. So if I'm going to get a Amen game... Amen to that. Yeah. If I'm going to get a game like uh, Battlefield 4, and I'm just picking mm-hmm. on that one, um, I'm, I'm probably not going to spend money. So immediately, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm going to be facing, not kids, but people with more discretionary income that are more committed and putting more money into that. So for, for me entering that, that's not a fair situation for me. And it's not, their, it's not their fault. It's the developer for setting up that ability for people to advance because they have the cash to do it. <laughs> well, and I'm going to find it, okay? Yeah. And what I was reading on it, there's quite a few forums on, on Blizzard and there's some, some independent forums that I was reading on the game itself. Mm-hmm. Hearthstone and what well, Blizzard's actually trying to do when they do like a ranked game or even the normal games, they're trying to do a matchmaking to where they actually can see your account without seeing it kind of thing. To where if you have a bunch of epic cards and you have a bunch of rares and some, you know, some legendary cards, they're not going to put you in with a level one that's just starting the game. Now, that's per- that's that's what I want to see. Um, I want to see more consideration for that. Yeah, now, I, I like I said, it's... it's, it's yeah. I'll have to find it again just so I can, you know, because I don't want to yeah. say something and it not be true. Cause it's, but if they will do it that way with the matchmaking, um, kind of like how they do it in League of Legends or, or anything else with even even the 3v3 arena and, and regular World of Warcraft, 
how they actually you have to have the reading a rating to fight those tier top teams. So you have to have the rating or the basically the cards when you start out. If you have a bunch of epic cards and you're, you know, you have a, you know, a shaman deck all decked out, you have the best of the best cards, you have the best of the best everything. You're not going to go against a level 1 guy that just started the damn game yesterday. It's not going to happen. You know, right. so I mean, I hope they they build more into that into the matchmaking value of it because if they do, I guarantee this game will pop off much more because it's it's a game you can play on your phone. Absolutely, and it, it sounds like that's the kind of game I'd like to get involved in. Absolutely, because um, I I think a lot of other games abuse that, but it, it sounds like Hearthstone's on the right track, and I might actually be more interested in it now because my mm -hmm. my impression of Hearthstone is you know I I just don't. I'm spending money on all different types of games. I just don't have time or money to do that for another game, but I do want to try Hearthstone. You know? And you know what? what what's so wrong with... Like, it used to be... What was so wrong with multiplayer where you didn't have stuff to, that you just actually earned it through playing? It was not wrong for players. Players didn't mind that. There was no people going, I wish I could fast-track this. But you always have that one person... Yeah. Okay, that you have, say, okay, like with me and Yogi, we started a, a, a game tryout with Armada Online. Mm -hmm. And we were thinking, you know, okay, we're going to play this a little bit before we have him on the show. And then he came on the show, and we're like, well, yeah, this would be cool if we could do this and this and this. And there's always one person that say, well, hey, can I just buy all the ships and just play them that way? See, I'd argue they're not really gamers. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah, they're I'm they're, harsh, they're people that want to spend money to have the best the best things. They're not gamers. But what's the point? I'm of telling you that right now. Them, if like you do me. that, if you do yeah. that, there's no disrespect to you whatsoever to anybody. But if you do do that, I'm going to call you out right now. You are not a real gamer. I'm sorry to say that. If you don't spend the time and actually playing the game the way it's supposed to be played, I'll dog you out every day. You are not a gamer. And I'd agree with that. It sounds wrong. harsh, but I would I would agree with that. that. The point of playing a game to me, and as we all grew up with the point of playing a game, was if there was something that was really rare, we worked our asses off for it. <laughs> uh, I know it sounds like I'm making this to be like a weird romantic version, but like, you know, like we worked for the stuff in our game. That was part of the fun of a game was there's a thing I could work towards, and I might get it one day if I'm good enough. Um, and that's what you know, that, that bled into your life as well. It, it taught you that there's stuff that you work for, but now if you have games where you can just jump right to the top with all the best equipment, what's the fun in that? that that's not fun to me. It's almost like cheating, you know? It's like cheating. What's the point of cheating in the game? You're not really earning anything, you know? It's like right. people that cheat in MMOs. It's like, I'm cheating so I could uh, have the best stuff, but you didn't earn it. What's the feeling of satisfaction in that? But see, I think that the more important discussion here, and, and, and I want to address some of the stuff that Stan has been discussing with me and also in the chat. Uh, we're actually going to go more in depth in this on the show that we were talking about that's going to come up where we're going to de dig deep into game theory and get and cover all the facets. I mean, we don't, obviously, we don't have the... In a two-hour period, we don't have enough time to do that, and we're getting close to the two-hour mark. But, uh, you know, um, the thing about it is... the I think the thing that you have to look at there is... Um, it's good to have the option to, to pay to win to fast-track because... Especially if you're joining a game like Hearthstone that's very skill-based late in the game and people are so much further ahead of, ahead of you. Yeah, matchmaking is good and they do have NPC battles so you don't have to be forced into the PvP scenario. They got rid of some of the bot battles and they're going to bring that back with adventure mode and whatnot. But, and they also have practice mode so you could do that as well. Um, but, you know, in a PvP scenario... It's good to have things to be uh, as close as possible. Um, if you look at Battlefield 4, which you mentioned a lot, Matt, the stuff you get in those kind of games, is, it's such a massive scale. It's really hard to balance the game the bigger the scale. What they do is all those things give you very slight edge. So it still does come down to skill and, op and kind of the taking advantage of opportunity, the element of surprise, right? Mm -hmm. And Hearthstone is very much about skill. I don't consider it a pay-to-win game because... Yes, you could pay to win to fast track your progress, but it is not an automatic. You don't have to pay to ha to be able to be competitive, and that's what I consider true pay to win. Because pay to win to me has a connotation of the only way this game is good is if you pump lots of time into it, and lots of money into it. Because really, time is a currency too. I agree. 
you know, yes, you should, gamers should have the balls to grind and earn stuff. But sometimes there's something to be said to be able to pick up a game whenever you want and compete and have fun with it and, and just based on skill have a shot to win. Because sometimes, you know, especially us that we're getting older, we have families, we don't have time to dedicate to hundreds of hours into one single game, you know. Hundreds of dollars, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and, and then if we if we do have time to invest in, into one game, we may want to spread, we, have, we want a buffet. We want to try out different games. No matter how much we might love one game, there's lots of different things we want to play as well to switch it up. So, you know, I think that's the kind of decision you have to make. Do you want to grind a lot or do you want to fast track yourself? You know, but I don't, I don't get that sense like I need to grind to get better cards. I might lose some matches and then say, oh, you know, if I had that card, I would definitely do better with this deck that I'm trying to build here. But like Obi said, I see people pull out legendaries. I don't even have one legendary yet, I don't think so. And I'm, I'm beating people that are whipping out like three or four legendaries in one match, you know. Well, you played against me. I suck. You played with <laughs> me against me on every character I have. I suck. And I continuously get people that just you pull out a legendary or all every one of their cards is rare. Right. Okay, I'll try to beat you or even hit you because you're going to have 20 minions out at all times. We can't have that many, but still, there's no way I can do anything because all your cards just outscale mine to, as in whole. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's frustrating. That, that can turn a lot of people off if they're just starting out. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think I fundamentally, I just... I grew up playing games where when I bought the game, that's the only amount of money I'm ever going to spend on that game. And I got every single thing that game had to offer. And I was on equal footing with everyone as long as I had the commitment and I wanted to be. I could be the greatest person in any multiplayer game as long as I put on the time. I don't feel that's the sense anymore. I feel if I'm going to get into a multiplayer game, I've got to probably pay something down the road. Or... And you got to admit, EA is worse for this. It makes it so that if you don't pay, you're going to be grinding a ton. Yeah, like, yeah. They, they put up a lot of barriers. They stretch things out a lot. And they're like, but you could pay to fast track this process. So they really funnel people into the pay decision. And that's what frustrates me is that developers are really... I just downloaded the new Family Guy app for iOS. It's like Simpsons tapped out. Um, oh god <laughs> i know i'm gonna get addicted to it it's brutal though like they immediately right off the bat they're like hey you having fun here's like a 10 hour task that's uh, it's gonna be yeah crazy. bring your game okay to stand still stop right there matt see that's yeah. a, that's exactly the point i was trying to get at too yeah i believe that a true pay to win game a game is truly about the money i mean they all want to make money ultimately i mean it's not there's no line about that now first yeah. two two points you brought up that are really good first one Games that you pay for up front, full retail price, and then they have microtransactions to support it further, they could yeah. go fuck themselves. That's that's stupid. Choose one or the other, or at least subsidize the price of the game, the initial investment through the microtransaction. Like, make it a 20 or $30 game, not a $60 game, for Pete's sake. But, um, I don't know what Canadian prices are. You can convert that later. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing is a, a paywall, right? A paywall is a nasty thing. When you, when, right off the bat, especially if it happens early, like, if it happens really early on, maybe not right off the bat, but if it happens early on in experience, or, or just after you get hooked in it, you're like, this is a great game, and, the, and they know, they know when that sweet spot's gonna be, when you're gonna be hooked, and they say, you're enjoying yourself? Well, guess what? You can't really go anywhere else unless you pay money, or if you want to, you can spend a hundred years and grow a, a really yeah. massive beard, and, you, and you'll get the same thing, you know? <laughs> That's exactly it, and I think, I think that's the danger. There's people like Blizzard that are doing it honestly, but there's developers that are like, they're, they're taking this trend and really kind of perversing it and, and really making it so that even if you buy a $69 game, um, you're not going to enjoy it as much unless you spent almost double that. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that, that's, see, that's exactly what I feel like. That's the real pay to win. That's the real pay to win sin right there. It's just game. Sin. It's like, <laughs> like a tongue twister. But, uh, hell yeah, yo. Throwing up gang signs. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I think I think Hearthstone, I mean, it could use some balancing, and definitely they need to bring back the single-player elements where you can get, get, gain your bearings. But I really recommend, like, someone who jumps into it, get keep an open mind, play with some friends and, and so they can walk you through some of the things that you might be doing wrong. Because it is, mm -hmm. I, I believe, a fun game 
like you like you said, it should ultimately be about everything as equal as possible, and ultimately it comes down to the player skill. It shouldn't be like, oh, I I spent one k and and I got this epic drop that makes me invincible and I automatically win. No, you know, and and and, 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 and nothing like do, that. If that's what you do, like Obi said, like really consider why you're playing this game. Consider what you're getting out of it because I'll tell you this much. If you're doing it to impress people online, it's not working. If you're doing it to like win some kind of virtual contest, it's not working. You gotta ask yourself, why are you playing a game if you're just spending money to get past the actual playing parts of it, right? And you know what, Assassin's Creed, it's funny, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, uh, they had this thing where you could pay to like reveal all the locations of the collectibles, uh, and you could like pay to like just uh, something stupid like it's like 99 cents to reveal all the treasure maps on a certain like island. I'm just like, <laughs> is this what we come to? This is ridiculous. Oh, like, that's crazy. Why are you playing this game then? Like, what's yes. what's the what's the point for you to play this game if you're just is it just to collect virtual? I don't know. It, it baffles my mind. The thinking behind some of these microtransactions. I, I did so, like. W I'm sorry, Obi. What did you say? Ahead. Oh. So, I did like one game that did that, Mass Effect 3, the multiplayer, I actually really enjoy it. And um, mm. I, I've more than felt, I mean, with the, the campaign alone, I got my money's worth, even though the ending was a little, eh. But, uh... Oh, you're the one of those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it didn't, in the end, it didn't feel like your choices meant anything, you know? Uh, it, it was like Bioshock Infinite, where they just draw, they drilled it into you. Choices do not matter. In the end, your choices do not matter. You know, everything that happens is the way it's gonna happen. You know, that's kind of the theme of that game. And let's not get into the, yeah, let's not get into the whole, uh, you know, atheist uh, t themes and whatnot. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the thing about Mass Effect Three, it has the microtransactions, but they are super generous with the stuff you get, the rewards you get after every single match or every two or three matches. So it never feels like a grind because you're getting that instant gratification. And that's ultimately what happens with when there's microtransactions available. They know that people are going to pull a trigger because we want instant gratification. If we don't get, get that immediate feedback, that's like a very, very fundamental theme in game design is, is the feedback and that kind of like that instant gratification where the player feels... They get a sense and, and, a, and a notification of their progress and that they're, do, they're on the right path and they're doing good things, you know, achievements, trophies, you know, a ding on a radar, you know, something <laughs> right. shining, you know. There's all these Every things you get. Seconds. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and, and the thing is we've gotten so spoiled as a society that everything needs to be faster and, 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 and bigger and better that when we don't get that, it's like we're, we feel disappointed and we, and we start judging things more harsh, you know. So I think that's part of it, too. But I, I don't see that in Hearthstone. Stan makes a good point. I remember in Zelda 20 years ago where it took a week or more to figure something out. Most big gamers <laughs> wouldn't put up with that today. That's oh, kind of yeah. Can you imagine Zel Zelda, I'm surprised Nintendo has done this. Zelda would be now like, hey, do you want to go through this forest or pay $5 for a special uh, <laughs> ocarina that transports you to the dungeon immediately? You know, I, I would if I saw that, I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. I remember I just, I actually figured out the, the, the Lost Forest uh, as a fluke, and then I just said, well, maybe as a pattern, I have to go up, and then down, and then left, and then right, right, you know, and then I finally got the pattern down, you know, but uh, back then, information didn't travel as fast, when you did get tips from someone, it was maybe uh, through a water cooler conversation, you know, yeah, or right. during a class or whatever, wherever you were at at that age, you know? Ninten Nintendo Hotline or Nintendo Power. Or yeah, only the Nintendo Hotline, but, I mean, that was a paid service. <laughs> yeah. You know, or you might have oh, Nintendo man. Power. Maybe I was paying to win before microtransactions. See that? Nintendo, so so it, it always existed. <laughs> ah, Think about it. <laughs> Nintendo Power, actually, that's a very it's a good point, because Nintendo Power used to have the, the, the fold-out maps with all the locations of all the loot, and they used to have the little cheat section, and then you had, a uh, like, these quarterly cheat books they used to send you right. with all yeah. the codes and everything. So that stuff has always existed. There was always a premium attached to it, but now it's like... The thing is, it, now it's worse because those microtransactions are so small, they're negligible. They're, oh, only a dollar? Only two dollars? But if you do that 50 times, it adds up. You do that 100 times, it adds up, you know? But it's because we inherently... 
Yeah, unless it's a really bad paywall, like we mentioned earlier, we inherently just have a need to, like, uh, just, like, uh, you know, get that instant gratification. But anyway, we're running close to the to the second hour. Where we got to wrap this up. Uh, Matt, you going to stick around for the for the full thing? Might as well. I think we got, like, five, five minutes ten minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go, guys. I can't stick around for the next one. Only five minutes. <laughs> yeah, but it's five minutes with you. Ooh. All right, so... <laughs> Again, we will be revisiting. Make me change the cameras five minutes of the show. Thanks. No, he's he's, he's just busting your chops. But um, we will be talking about this. That's that, you know, there's a lot of good stuff there. I think we're gonna be revisiting that topic a lot and, and a lot of the t- tangents there. Uh, we were gonna talk about esports and talk about how golf is not a sport. All I'm gonna say on that is that I like playing golf, so I hope I wasn't trying to offend. But watching golf as a sport. It's about as fun as watching paint dry. I'm sorry. And you know what pissing me about golf? To me, it's just an excuse for people to show off how much money they have to spend. It's like, I bought all this land. And you know what I built? A golf course. Ha, 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 ha. I just, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, after, that's after asshole thing. After builds me my gaming house, and we have our twelve to 15,000 square foot house ourselves, I'm going to build a golf course too and then when you come up to to or come down because i'm probably gonna be living in hawaii by then when you come over <laughs> to play golf yogi i'm gonna go yogi so yomar what's going on brother get the fuck off my course oh why wouldn't you turn it into a paintball course <laughs> yes yeah, paint, that paintball hell yeah definitely yeah I wouldn't let you in anyway yogi no we go paintball. on the Obi, you can't yeah, stop hey, us we gotta Paintball yeah, is a lot yeah, more cost. Like, come on, guys. Paintball, <laughs> building a paintball field, you use far less land. It's a more, lot more fun and much more cost effective. I'm gonna do paintball. I'm just gonna do aerosol. Paintball. Yeah, aerosol. Would be good. I like paintball just because with paintball you have to tune your your markers just right to get that and and account for wind variance. You get I don't know. There's a lot of nice things about it. Sometimes we get lucky and the paintball bounces off you because someone doesn't have the, the marker. Paintball. I know. Oh, they both hurt, but yeah. Yeah. Airsoft hurts worse. Yeah, that's why you like it. <laughs> I like know. But anyway, uh, so that's that on that. And uh, I can't wait for the Masters Week to be done so I can get my town back. <laughs> So this week, this week on, t- on Deals for Cheap Bastards, we don't have much. Uh, just check out. Make- There's people out there that don't know what Steam is. If you are a PC gamer or you're a- at all interested in playing games on the, P- on the PC, download Steam for Pete's sake. Google it. They got games on sale all the time. And they got- you won't play any of them, but just download them anyways. Sure. I mean, if you pay a dollar, you can, you know, it's not bad. I mean, you, 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 people pay $60 for games they don't play. So why not just get a dollar game? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure I play. Yeah, I'm sure every gamer out there has some games that they may have taken out of the ship and, and loaded in once or twice and they never revisited on the console. Just saying. And not just on Steam, but Steam, you definitely get a massive collection going. But yeah, they have they have Steam free to play weekends when the games go for free for that weekend. You can test them out and then they do major reduction on that. So check that out. And uh, yeah, we're not going to do the dust off this week again. We're skipping it. We want to make sure we stay under two hours because we are over our all games. I think it's time to do some plugs, right, Obi? That's fault. Shameless plugs. Hmm? Guys, this is the... Yeah, it's always your fault. This is the time where we actually give some shout-outs to our our, our... 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 Our friends. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I've lost my spot and my window closed, so... All right. So please, you want me to do it? Want... You want me to do it? Go ahead, man. <laughs> you said you lost your spot. Okay, so anyway. All right, go ahead, go ahead, Go ahead, Obi. You got it. Again, all right, I will do it. Horseplay will now be syndicated over at allgames.com every Thursday at 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. We don't. Eastern time. i just reading. So stay tuned as we, uh, we do dry <laughs> runs to see how everything is going to work out with the network. Please give us, you know, give us some time to get everything set up. We will have it all set up, so we are over there with you. Please show some love by supporting the site and hanging out on, on our uh, IRC, our chat with us, uh, just to talk. We are on Stitcher. We are on TuneIn Radio, BlackBerry, Windows, forward slash Zoom, and iTunes, guys. So you guys can check us all there. Leave us some reviews on our iTunes and our talk shoe. 
and Stitcher. It really does. It helps us out more than you guys think. It really does. So more listeners means a bigger promotions, giveaways, etc. Giveaways, you guys, we're actually doing a lot of our giveaways on the network, which is right down if you guys want to point downwards on the bottom of your screen if you guys are watching. But if you're not watching, all our network is geekyantics.wordpress.net. It's not .com anymore. It is .net. But you guys can check us out there. And also, leave us a voicemail right up top above Matto and Yogi's head, 206-415-4987. That voicemail again, 206 206- Four one five four nine eight seven. You guys can give us a give us a shout out. Do whatever you guys want to. We'll try to Jesus. We'll try to play it out on uh, over. <laughs> these facial expressions are killing me. All radio, <laughs> all radio, all music was provided by Technoax. That is Techno with a K, and he is on YouTube. Technoax.com. Go check that out. He has lots of good music to uh, to hear. If you guys all highlight videos and audio cast, the uncut versions of Horseplay, which are mostly the funniest, are available <laughs> on right here at Obi-Wan X2 on Twitch, Yogizilla's channel at Yogizilla, Twitch TV, and um, currently right now on Yobi, Yobi, Yogizilla's YouTube page, www.youtube.com forward slash Yogizilla. You guys can catch that out, a lot of the audio. We do want to make sure that we give shout-outs and want you guys to check out our friends at Gaming History 101, Sega Nerds, the Gaming of the Shrew, which were formerly Sega Ad- Addicts, Com- Com- Castuberus, Dr. Hoopat <laughs> Podcast, Orange Lounge Radio, R9 Cast, Knuckleballer Radio, of course, Zombie Cast, Agents Woo-hoo! of the Shield, The Party Chat, and the B-Team Podcast, and all these guys are all on allgames.com. So you guys can go check us out there at All Games Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Podcast. Sorry about that. And we just want to make sure that you guys go check us all out. It's all right there. And you guys can check us out again on our – he keeps changing the, the words around. You guys can't check us out at geekyandex.press. It's not me. Nah, dude, stop. I'm trying to get out of here. He's trying <laughs> – your sister cast and your mama cast. But there are tons of blogs, guys. If you guys want to be involved in those blogs, you guys can go right to the geekyantics.wordpress.net and just start something up. We will get involved. Um, myself, Yogi, I think Matt's going to be putting one on here later this week because he won't leave the chat alone, so he's going to have to. You guys can check out that. Respond. We'll respond back. Mm-hmm. So we just want to make sure that you guys really appreciate those that are listening on the podcast and those that are watching us live. This is Horseplay. We do want to make sure that you guys. Okay, we're not done yet. And Yogi has one more thing. To yes, yes, out of here. yes. We did not forget about the voicemails. We will play them. We're gonna have a nice stockpile of them. But keep come, keep keep bringing them in. What we want to do when we play, we want to be actually have a time to respond to them. So when we don't have guests, it's probably the best time. We'll have voicemail. Right. We'll have call-ins. No, it's not a bad thing to say. The the voicemails are mainly for when we want to have a little extra filler and extra discussion points. You know. We don't want them to supersede our time with the guests because their time. Uh, we we appreciate the time of our guests. We also appreciate your your voicemail. So keep them coming. That's all I want to say. Two zero six four one five four ninety seven. Go ahead, Obi. Close. Take us out. Take us out. Once again, this is Obi One X Two right here. My cohort, Yogi Zilla, and our special guest, special guest, Matto McFly, <laughs> Mr. Matthew Bradford. Thanks for joining us, sir. We'll see you guys. My pleasure. Next week. Peace. Peace. Out. Meow. Meow. Bozzy Boo Boo. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wait. No, sorry.